director, he's a film director, and he has been uh, amazingly awarded with just one of his films. We're going to get to that here in a moment. Mm. Let me get Moose one second. Moose, come here. With me. With me now. Come here, pup-pup. So, um, I'm just going to wait for James to come live. As soon as he gets on, uh, we will go through it. I think today I'd like to start talking about um, consistency. I think that's today's, because I think that one of the things that James has is that, like, consistency and this ability to stay on track, which as a director, you really need, right? Because you want to stay on, on course as much as possible. All right, give me a second. I'm going to run, find him, and then come right back. All right, so I just invited him. We'll see if he comes through. I'm sure he will. Uh, and any moment now, we will have ourselves Mr. James Atkins. Hopefully it pops out. Uh, I tagged him in the, uh, in the description. So hopefully uh, it will show up and he will come in. I don't see anybody so far. But uh, a lot of people say, that one of the things that makes a great person is um, whenever that person uh, is, like I was saying earlier, somebody who stays on course. Uh, James, for some reason, it's not allowing you to do it. Uh, are you on your phone? And if you're not, try uh, doing this on your phone. Because it's saying that uh, you don't have a uh, like a uh, a camera connected. I love doing the live feeds, man. I really do. I, with all the technical issues and whatever else, I don't know what it is. I just I enjoy the the pressure of it. I guess you could say it's pressure. I don't think it's pressure, but whatever. Um, the 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 sense of like um, it's right here. You know, I was saying that on the last uh, couple of feeds ago uh, when I had uh, uh, somebody come in and uh, yeah, it was cool. All right, let's try this again. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't send him. No, let's try adding him maybe. Try again. It's already been invited, so I can't do that. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Bomb. Now I see you. I see you, Mr. James Atkins, and now I ask you to join. Here we go, episode 11, James Atkins, director, uh, friend, uh, confidant. Uh, I'm excited to bring him on. Uh, this is going to be good. And any moment now, I think he's coming in. Howdy, hell. Yes, yes. Mr. James Atkins, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm okay. It is a very wet and cold day here in the UK, but uh, and we've had some lovely weather in the last couple of weeks. But uh, no, I'm good. Good man. Good to see you. Um, okay, so uh, I guess we'll just jump straight into it, right? And so uh, tell us everything we want to know. Uh, who are you? How did you meet me? How do we even know each other? Uh, I would love to talk about the your 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 film and how many uh, awards you've won, uh, how how you uh, have figured out the game of the uh, you know independent film. I, you have to say on some level you figured something I figured out. It, well, uh, on, on some level, I figured it out. I figured it out for other people. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out how other people are doing it. I just. I'm just struggling myself, but other people, are, yeah, I know how they do it. <laughs> I mean, well, so, I mean, you, you have, um, with one film, right? And I'm, I'm super impressed by this. With one film, you've been in how many 
film festivals? Well, um, at, at present, it's been in over 170. Um, now, I'm not going to lie, a few of them are a little bit dodgy. I mean, those of you on the film circuit um, will know that there's some scam festivals out there that accept anything and give you an award. Um, so a, a, a small amount of that. But the majority of them are legit festivals that um, have a screening and have proper judges and all that kind of stuff. So, um, right. yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean that, I that's the like... thing I could discuss. The the crazy fraudulent festivals that have propped cops pops up in like the last couple of years. Um, it's now out it, of those. Damn. Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Please forgive me. <coughs> there it is. Okay. Um, my question here now is, at these festivals that are. Uh, fake. Let's call them fake for what it is, right? Do you do any of the movies that actually get an award go on to do something? Because there's fake like award ceremonies at Magic. Well, it's, like in the it's, Magic it's, community, it's, it's the same a, thing. Like, uh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's probably a similar thing. Basically, they charge you a submission, um, which you don't pay, um, and then you. Get hounded with emails saying we'll give you eighty percent off, ninety percent off, and at the end you just think, "Oh, to hell with it! It's three three dollars. I'll submit." Lo and behold, they accept everything, so they're clearly not um, in any way um, judging the merit of the film. They accept everything, and then they just pick a film out of a hat and say, "Well, right, that's the winner." Or they give multiple films the same award. They say everyone's like one best film, and it's like, well, that that means nothing, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, uh, but so they make a they make a nominal amount on the submission fees. But here's the crux of it: um, the gullible um, or overly rich filmmakers that submit and they win a prize. It's like, and now you can get your trophy, and you think, great, okay, send it to me. Here are my details. And they go, and that'll cost you $300. And it's like, oh, right, okay, I've got two words for you. Here's one, here's the other. You ain't getting $300 from me for your trophy that I could actually order myself off That's any just... trophy website <laughs> and <laughs> put it myself for 20 quid. So why am I going to send you $300 for a trophy? But there's enough there's enough people clearly doing it because it's become an industry within – right. Within it's a the industry within itself, yeah, award winning. Yeah. It, ha it happened within the NFT community. There was a company that um, they wanted clout, and so they spent, I think it was seventy five thousand dollars at a, a NFT conference, and they won uh, best NFT of some type of whatever from that category. And come to find out, five other companies won the exact same award who all paid $75,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, and so, this is exactly what these festivals are doing. Um, it's kind of scandalous. Um, when in all the lockdowns and stuff, I had uh, the, the income to do it, I was like, as I say, they dropped the fee. They would drop the fee so much. It's like, you know what? Just so that I can post on social media, hey, don't forget my film still exists. Is it worth four or five dollars to be able to post on Facebook and Instagram and so on? Hey, I won this award. Sure, I'm not going to get a certificate. Sure, I'm not going to get a trophy, but I can still say I got in and I won that award. But I think people are hopefully now wise, wiser to it, so they don't go, "Oh, well done." I mean, at the end of the day, my my posts about <laughs> about winning awards or getting awards of my 850 plus Facebook friends, I get a 10. 10 people will go like, <laughs> like three, right, which in my right. family will go, well done. But that's because they've become numb to it. When, when you've had a film that like every single couple of days you're going, hey, I've got into a festival. Hey, I've won an award. You, it's like, so tell me something. I, I, I the every time I, I think, I, for, I, I think even the last four or five times that you've posted, I've just said, you know, and I, and I, and I've almost, it's the opposite, but it's the exact same 
uh, kind of energy, which is like, okay, 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 I get it. <laughs> this fucking movie yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's so overwhelming, you know, from a, look, from the layman point of view of a person who's seeing somebody else who has taken the time to write, direct, or so, let's not even write, cast, uh, a crew, film, edit, direct, uh, all of it, and then be part of it. And then also for the next amount of years, COVID or not, that you, and, and this is what I was saying at the beginning, consistency, you have achieved something that other people, I mean, I don't know how many films, if you look it up, have gotten anywhere near the amount of awards, whether or not they're real or not is really irrelevant like i'm ranked 30 something in the world as the top 100 magicians of all time it's not fucking real it's just yeah. because people voted and why did people mm -hmm. vote because i posted on social media that was it. That, that's it i mean to be fair um on imdb even though last year going to my other thing that pays the bill which is as a continuity script supervisor which isn't a writer folks it's a it's a member of the crew that basically goes there to make sure the film will edit together so they're mm -hmm. looking out for continuity errors they're making sure that the script is delivered as per the script etc etc last year I, I i worked on films with like pierce brosnan and and um uh, uh john amos and stuff like that and it's like that's really super cool um but people couldn't give a rat's ass you know and that hasn't actually got me any work this year no, wait, um, hold on. i think that i think that maybe that might be like your and i'm not trying to be disrespectful also NBA. <laughs> and also maybe NBAs, right and whatever else but is there not a way for you to like there's this new method that i've heard of that comes from google because google changes the way that they do their seo uh every quarter every couple years they just they have they implement new ideas to make it harder for you to rank at the top of uh of different things and so about a year ago they came out with the eat method which is expertise authority and trust and so it's built by you creating blog posts and i know that sounds silly but blog posts that um you turn into press releases now yeah. this is the the second part is the expensive part where but if you buy in bulk you can buy uh a press release for 45 dollars a pop but you have to buy in bulk like we're talking like forty five hundred dollars you're buying a, a hundred of these things or, mm -hmm. or whatever right and then at that point you're putting out a press release once every two weeks, and then you're getting picked up by AP Press, by all of the major news organizations, radio stations that have the, you know, in their in their their daily stuff that's happening within town, and they have all these little articles that never make it to the news, but they have it in their news on the website. So it's like things to do this weekend or interesting person from our neighborhood. All of those articles are in these websites that link back to you so the first part is the expertise you're writing about for instance a brief and obviously you're not writing it you're just going to chat gpt and say write from my point of view whatever it's fine there's nothing wrong with that because it's still coming from a place of expertise you do know what you're talking about and you do know that when you read over whatever chat gpt says and it's wrong you could say no this is actually this instead of this fix it clean it up make it an article that you've written per se with a dictating secretary what's the difference none right and then you post that as saying the difficulties of lighting on set the difficulties of or the 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 uh, the process of hiring an actor right and so all of these things make you an expert the authority is when you pay for the press release which then hits you up on all these major websites it's a link back to you as the character who created all of this information. And then you have a Google page, uh, like a business page, and you ask everybody you've ever known or worked for to ask for a review. At 30, usually, you're at the top, usually. And then that's it.
you're number one on Google. So when somebody looks for whatever it is that you're doing and in your, in your, your meta tag of your, of your business, i.e. a director, set design, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then you have articles that are based on that. That's it. You're done. You're at the top of Google. And when anybody, somebody looks up uh, film, uh, uh, let's say continuity expert, you pop up first. Yeah. And there's no issue around it. There's no, because in the way that it works is Google says, we want to find for our customers, our clients, the best of whatever this is. And the only way we know that they are the best is if they can prove it to us by creating content video, by creating a movie that wins many awards. But if they don't know that, if you haven't set out a press release in uh, the last year that says, my name's James Atkins, I have this movie, I've won 300, I've gone to 300 festivals and I've won this many awards. And then an article about how the movie came to be, whatever, and where you're at with it now, uh, we're looking for distribution or blah, 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 or James is now working on films with blah, 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 and blah, 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 doing this. Uh, if you need him for an interview for, hey, somebody, I know this is really out there, but somebody got hurt on set. We need someone to talk to immediately. Let's do the list. Oh, he's a guy who does continuity. How could this have happened, James? Oh my God. Tell us as a continuity expert, how could it, you know? And so you would be like, well, the re you know what I mean? And you get paid for those things. Right. So it's like, and, and that's how you build that authority. And then that's how you end up on stage in front of a thousand people at some film festival where you're like, film festivals are fucking bullshit. <laughs> there was, <"Yeah." laughs> that is exactly what I would do as well. <laughs> your, festival, your festival sucks. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Oh my God! But at this film festival, let me think. You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. You suck, and you're cool. I'm out. <laughs> Throw the microphone in the air. Walk away, and then people start hiring you just for that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "We and need that guy to be on our festival." <laughs> Before you know it, you've made a cottage industry of people who go around to other festivals who tell other people's festivals that their festival sucks. And that becomes a thing. Well, the other thing, and I you, is you, could, you could set up a festival and invite people and all that kind of stuff. And then you, everyone gets a bit, directors and the actors and so on, get their Q and A's, but you accept films that are bad. And then they go up on stage and you just tear them apart. <laughs> Say, why the hell did you do this? This person was awful. All of oh these story God. elements don't no. work. Please explain in front of this crowd and just put people on, on the spot. <laughs> so have you seen Kill, have you seen Kill Tony? No. So Kill, okay, Kill Tony is a uh, a, a podcast that's shot live in Austin, Texas, um, and uh, Tony Henchcliffe is a, is the guy who's the the comedian, very raw, hardcore, the worst of the worst types of jokes. Nothing, no, nothing's off limits, and he's gay. So I mean, even more off limits. They, they, whatever you want, you know. And so what he did was he, he created a show where he's like, we'll just have a bucket and we'll have a bunch of comedians put their name in a bucket and we'll book it out. And you have to give us one minute. It has to be fresh minute and it has to be in front of a live audience and go. <laughs> and, <laughs> listen, man, if you're not ready, it's not good. <laughs> no. I mean, it's bad. So, yeah. So I'm like, this is perfect. I was like, I want to do this with magic now. You know, make a Kill Tony magic idea. So I like the idea of like a Kill Tony magic festival, a um, movie festival. like Or like uh, there's a restaurant that's called Dick's in the United States where they literally come to your table and treat you badly and talk badly about your family and about what you're wearing. And I mean, we, we got, we've got a cafe. I live in like, like Nowhereville down in South Southern England. And we've got a cafe locally. Which basically they they said they give you a coffee cup and like they instead of drawing like a four leaf clover or something they just put cunt <laughs> your coffee <It's> like what? <laughs> it's brilliant. I mean, my, my parents have vowed never to go <laughs> because of that very reason because it's just it's just crude it's just crude and, but it seems like it's working. So well, I, 
Yeah, well, no, it's it's, it's bizarre to have it where it is, which is literally nowhereville. You'd expect it in like a city where you're going to have a large enough audience, but like there's an old people's home and like pretty much nothing else locally. <laughs> and they're going in and getting that in their coffee. And it's like, what? <laughs> that is hilarious. And it's probably got like a line. Because there's like all the young kids that are on like Instagram and TikTok. They're like, we gotta go get the cunt coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the genius behind it. But that's the genius behind that kind of marketing. Like, I mean, look at the the fight right now with um, the KSI fight and the Jake Paul fight with this guy who's been posting pictures of his girlfriend every day at all hours of the day i think he's posted up to 200 and something photos of his now fiance with other men talking about how you know she's been with everybody what's it feel like to be uh you know sex with a hot dog hallway the train and the oh man it's and it's just she sent the cease and desist letter i mean it's gotten to that point you know like and, but it's all it's all marketing. Yeah. It's yeah. all just to get people to go see that fight. Pay for the money to see the fight, whether it's pay-per-view or go live, to see either this kid get his ass kicked again. Cause I don't think he's won a fight. <laughs> right? Lo uh, Logan Paul, his brother, the older brother, the one that went to the Japanese forest that got in trouble for laughing at a dead suicide victim. Yeah, because one, uh, one of them's joined like World Wrestling Federation or whatever it's yeah, called. That's, now. That, that's is it that one or the other one? I believe that's Logan Paul, and he has with KSI a drink that's called Prime, right? Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's. Jake, so Jake Paul's the other one who keeps Jake getting Jake Paul's back. like the real boxer. Jake Paul's like the one who's really trying to fucking be a boxer. Like, I mean, he's going at it when you see the like the training. And and, and Logan, we can't say that he's not uh, an athlete. We can't say that he's not working. And I mean, he's yeah. doing WWE. I mean, that's the height of entertainment when it comes to the yeah. amount of money that you're making, the amount of publicity and fame and the machine that's behind it, whatever. You can't say the kid's not doing well, uh, even if he is in problems with other things that he's done and other NFT projects that have failed and blah, 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 blah. I think that's it's almost um, inevitable that it's going to happen, uh, especially in something so new like uh you know non-fungible tokens like what the fuck is a picture that you buy and what does it actually mean and how does it have value if you don't know then you can easily just be like i don't need to buy it i can just copy and paste it and it's mine you know like people have said you know which isn't true uh, you know it I, I, there's like so many uh, amazing ideas that i have had that i'm like why hasn't this been done yet like in my mind i'm thinking like there's a real business here so one of my concepts was imagine like we're looking at a stadium and we have six cameras, one at the top and then like the cheap seats all the way at the top, but going all the way down, all the way into the green room. So like super VIP, VIP tickets to the cheapest $1 ticket. And what you do is you have a 360 cam set at those six different spots that has just an outlet of that that feed so that anybody who jumps in can see anything that's in that 360 camera right so you can have up to let's say 100 people per camera and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't downgrade this the the stream the people would still be able to 100 people would be able to look from any angle on a 360 cam because it's one big stream that it's pulling out anyways so super easy to run that in my mind and if you have enough money, bro, a server bank with all the info as the stream's coming in and it's basing it and then holding it and then, right? It, dude, a thousand people per camera at that point. So I'm thinking to myself, why are we not already doing VR uh, of shows where a person who loves Metallica wants to see Metallica live every fucking night? Because that's them. That's their bands, bro. You put on your VR glasses or your headset or your new AR glasses, so now you can watch the concert at home on your, you know, on your wall while you're while you're just walking around your house. It's on live, you know. And you pick whatever camera you want to be in, and whether there's a chat field or not, and then you can chat with whoever it maybe has like the super super extra expensive NFT. 
that gives him access to the green room before the band is on stage where the band agrees to interact with those people because those people pay ten thousand dollars a piece to be members of that thing and then they're in the group and they get to feel like they're part of the crew and when they go to concerts they pull out their nft and they don't have to just be in the green room they're in the green room in real world yeah you know so, good idea. Bro, there's so much to play right there then on top of that it's how many concerts did you go to each concert that you go to you get a specific t-shirt that's from that location so that when you're in your you know vr world you're good to say, ha, huh, look at this, bro. I paid the $10,000 NFT, and I get a different shirt for every city that I go to when I show up in VR. And then when I show up in real world, I get the real world T-shirt and the you know, VR NFT T-shirt. And then that NFT becomes super expensive because I went to every single fucking concert. I have every single T-shirt. I have, You know what I mean? And that becomes like a, a, a massive cottage industry. You know, and, and yeah. like, why hasn't that happened? You know, and um, then, then you, you can, you, <laughs> they've just taken your idea. <laughs> run, people, run. The other one is um, the same concept, but um, as tickets. Like you have, like, at, like t ticket masters doing it now, where instead you just have a ticket and they just click it on your phone and beep, 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 and you're done and you walk in. But then that ticket is meaningless; it's thrown away. Or you just delete it off the app. But what if that was an NFT? Uh, and then it said, and then and then you can do a um, uh, like a drop shipping. So go to a uh, this website, prove that you own the NFT by scanning it or by adding this number that's only on a, your, your NFT, and then pick the size shirt that you want. Press twenty one ninety five. It gets delivered to your house, and now it has, you know. NFT holder one one seven three three uh, at concert, and it has like the concert logo thing for that concert for that location with Houston on the front or whatever. You know, that's dope. That's dope, and that that whole thing that I just came up with for a person who's a multimillionaire, two seconds. Because that's not, not a hard project to put together. The one that it's I not. always had from for thirty five years was big pen lids that were flavored because people that work people at work chew pens right when you're at work you got a pen it's in your mouth why the That's hell is it there? why isn't there strawberry flavored pen lid why isn't there for cigarette addicts nicotine flavored not with smoke coming out but you just get a nicotine hit by sucking so, a pen lid and you don't have to give your your employees a cigarette break because they're getting their nicotine <laughs> it, so I, I, i've no idea why nicotine pen lids has never been a thing but maybe they so are i've never investigated because i don't smoke <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna say to you first of all i think what you just said is an absolute genius concept um the second thing is it would would not be i don't think too hard to create the you would have to find whoever makes 3d printing uh filament and you would have to find a food grade based and then you would have to be able to find some additive that you could put into the plastic so that when you chew on the plastic you can taste uh hot cinnamon mint spearmint bubble gum nicotine flavored blah, 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 blah. and Damn. now and now you just created a pen company that does something else. And so, and that's, I haven't heard of it. You haven't heard of it. We just created that shit. We own this. Anybody steals it, screw you. Uh, but no, seriously, I love the idea. And I love the idea of having like a pen cap or even the entire plastic of the pen itself being well, edible. There are probably so yes. many health and safety problems of people choking to death because they decide to eat their pen lid. But there's no way, there's no way it could work because you'd have so many lawsuits of my kid died because they ate so, a pen. So then, so then what you do in that lawsuit immediately is that you say, um, you prove that you uh, that there have been people doing the process of eating pens prior to you making pen eating pens. 
and you make whatever the plastic is made out of biodegradable and 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 uh and and uh food based yeah food based maybe you make it out of uh avocado uh, se uh seeds because that's a new big thing where they crush down the avocado seeds make it and they can make it into a straw that with the cellulose that's still there it's a very cool process and you can eat it um so that there's that there, there's your eat eat your pen wait no you don't want to eat the pen because then the inside uh, that's gross because then the, the ink would also have, whoa well, it's only the lid no imagine if the entire pen up to the ink even the cartridge that holds everything's edible and even the kids, you know? kids, kids got <laughs> ink all over him. He's like, "It's okay, mommy. I like it. It's blueberry." <laughs> and that way, you get away from the lawsuits. Nobody can get in trouble. And yeah. if you eat your pen, it's your fault. But we want you to eat your pen. Yeah. Well, really, we just want you to suck on the end of the pen lid. But people are going to eat it that much. But if you were to eat it, you would get 32 grams of sugar. You would get this much protein. <laughs> Go for it. Get one of your five a day. Hey, if it's strawberry. Not only is it the way that you write down your thoughts, but it's also how you get through the day. <laughs> five pence for me is the same as 1,500 fucking you know, calories. <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole marketing thing. There's a all there dude you could play with it you could even have the pen where you're doing it with your coffee i you know i used to get packets of sugar but now i just use my pen and it starts disappearing into the cup and then you're like hmm hazelnut <laughs> and it's got nicotine perfect all right well hopefully. these are all really good, right? it's it's really next good year. Idea. it's our next year we'll be millionaires with our contacts <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know the right people to make this happen. You know that I do. So I could talk to a couple people and be like, dude, I've got a fucking great proprietary idea. Nobody's ever come up with this shit. All we have to do is find a food grade ink, which is possible. Uh, food grade plastic that's edible, possible. And then all you have to do is add flavor to each. To all of it's possible, bro. I mean, we're and then, and then, coming up with anything. Everyone will be stealing each other's pens and half eaten pens and like, I like that pen and eating other people's pens and the amount of like viruses and stuff that are gonna be going around because somebody had like herpes or thrush or whatever it is and they were sucking their pen and then somebody else stuck their pen and then we'd be bloody that's a lawsuit there, man. <laughs> no, 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 sir. No, 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 legally, that's not right. That's like saying, um, I, I, I'm selling you poisoned apples without telling you. No, if I tell you that they're poisoned apples and you buy them and then you eat them and then you die, that's your fault for buying the fucking advertised poison apple. And if we have on the packaging, you know, this is edible, but you're not supposed to eat it. They can't say shit. Like, yes, it's edible. Yes, you can lick on it. Yes, you can get a ng, 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 bite it, but you're not supposed to eat it. I mean, you can. And yeah, it's 32 grams of protein. And sure, it's sugar. And there's some kids who like to put it on their face and eat the blueberry. I, I get it, but that's not our fault. Well, there's people who take well, pens. Hopefully, well, well, hopefully, 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 the listeners will, will hear about this and go, this is a brilliant idea. We're going to give Paul and James. Like... We'll give Paul and James five percent of all of our profits going That's forward, we and we don't, we don't need it. Then we don't have to do anything, and they can run with it. <laughs> okay, just give listen, them, just listen, give them listen, money. listen. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's do this now. We're do, it's a live feed, so it actually counts. Uh, because this is an actual document that's being recorded in the moment, right? So if you wanted to actually get super technical and blah, 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 this is a real document we're, rec we're, rec we're creating. So we'll say it. Uh, you're good with just 5% each or 5% total? Oh, why not each? You get it because you set up the feed. I get it because it's my idea. 
We only want 10% yeah. for this amazingly great idea, 5% each. If anybody goes out there and makes it, me and James want 5% each of the idea that we just created live on this platform. Call it whatever you want to platform it because it's on so many platforms. I repost. Because ultimately, I'm a filmmaker. You're a magician. We don't want to be fucking around trying to design pens. But somebody else can. Who does? There we, just want, we, we just, we just no. want the money. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm 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 gonna go find like a kid who's like in design school, who's like looking at that one weirdo, you know, who's always chewing on a pen. Like you, you come here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe wear all black. Maybe wear all black in a black suit with a black tie. And be like, <clears throat> they told me to come and talk to you. You're the one. He's gonna must do it. He's gonna want the new thing then. <laughs> He's not we gonna must. want strawberry. <laughs> we need a we need an edible pen. You're the one to make it. <laughs> the kid's just like okay. okay. <laughs> and then and then you and then you bring up some kind of device, you go <laughs> like a flash of light and then walk away. And then the kid's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> You'll either get somebody who A starts making a pen very quickly that's edible, or B he drops out of school and like starts to live in some <laughs> some like uh you know some island far away kind of thing. Just gives up on life completely. He's like, Oh my god, they saw me. <laughs> no, it'll be so but that person will be the next Elon Musk and like turning on and off satellites for the Ukraine war and and taking over Twitter. What what is Twitter called now? It's like X or something. And what is it? What is the tweet? So the idea of it, and I actually kind of like the idea because nobody's done it yet. Everybody else just copies everybody else, which is what they're all going to do as soon as X works. They're going to try and keep up. Um, he's creating a platform of everything, like WeChat, but here in the United States. So, so video, text messaging money payment system uh video games think of anything and everything that you can think of that you could want to do on the internet and instead of having 15 apps you have one one that has you know 12 uh outlets let's say whatever and they're all basically the same thing as all the 15 other apps that you were using before and he wants to and he wants to use dogecoin as his base platform pay because he's such a dogecoin head so and he's already mentioned it and as soon as he mentioned it dogecoin went like you know and that's the, yeah. that's the thing i think it's a genius concept i really, really do mm. i think it's gonna be, it's the future james man look i've been going through this a lot lately with people any of those who fear the future of computers and robots and transhumanism bro no offense right and i'm not trying to fuck with anybody or be rude but this is the thing that we're living in it's not changing it's not not going to all of a sudden go left field we're all hippies in the woods it's not gonna happen Right? There's too many people buying million dollar, twenty million dollar, hundred million dollar cars, let alone houses and apartments that they never live in in New York, that it's not gonna change. The behavior is this, not <laughs> you know, like are you not concerned though by the mass unemployment that's on the horizon? No, I mean it's so, AI I, is the AI the job that I did during lockdown. AI hey, could do it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, so, 100%. so basically, um, we had the policy of ship it to India because they were cheap, um, and now AI is just going to take all the Indian jobs. There's going to be massive unemployment over in so, India. Yeah, so, um, so, so, so to answer you, that question, so it's, the it's, IMF fuck people up. The IMF has already spoken about having about a hundred different countries join in on electronic uh money the united states has been talking for the last five ten years that they want to stop printing money uh and they want to change over 
So, um, because printing money, uh, just the process of it and the cryptography of it and all of the pro like all the things that happen before a bill is made, and then the actual process of transferring the money after it's printed to the banks, to the location, that's a sh another whole set of uh, logistical crazy. And then the destruction of the money and the da-da-da-da. Bro, another full logistical nightmare. If you could just get rid of all three of those things, you're saving like billions and like, and we're talking about multiple, multiple hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And that just disappears. So yeah, they want that. And those who are the BlackRock and the, the whatever groups that own everything, they want that too. And they want movies that can be made in 30 seconds rather than movies that are taking six to eight, nine weeks a year to be created. When you could go to a machine that's this massive quantum computer that you've spent a billion dollars on whatever, and you could just be like, uh, and I've, I've said this many times before, but a movie with um, uh, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, they're vampires, post-apocalyptic, fighting some cause that's uh, to help the human race, even though they're vampires, they're the strongest thing against the AI robots. Go! And then 45 seconds later, oh, and directed by Steven Spielberg, uh, edited by whoever, cinematography by your favorite cinematographer, your favorite visual interface, your favorite whatever. I want the movie to sound like this. And in the middle of the movie, be like, you know what? I don't like that scene. Change it and make it like this with this actor instead. Because I think it's going to feel better. Or I want to see Fight Club and I want to see it with this actor and this actor instead. Like, show me all the different actors that I could pick. And you swipe through actors to choose which one would play in the movie Fight Club. And then you watch Fight Club played by that actor. That would be kind of fucking cool imagine like jim carrey in the role of um brad pitt for fight club mind-boggling and john candy as john Cusack. Oh. like you like i mean it's mind-boggling what we could be doing shelly truck uh, kimbro says made it <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean and, and that i think is actually kind of cool like there's a fear and i get it of hey i'm not going to have a job i'm not going to have a this i'm not going to have a that and in my in my humble opinion production is dead in the next five to ten years so if you're like a person who's like well i'm really good because i produce things quickly and what i mean by that is like productivity is dead as you just said, robots are taking it over. AI can write whatever. We can do move. We can do video. We can do images. And now, you know, some of the text to image are just, and let alone the NSFW versions that are out there on Reddit that you can do that are, you know, text to image and text to video that are just mind boggling. So it's like, yeah, I don't give it much time. I say three to five years. Most people don't have jobs. Most people are getting doled out a small amount of money per month. Let's call it 1500 worldwide. Everybody has, and we all just live on that. And there's a payment system. And once again, cottage industries that are taking money from people. And everybody's living in this world of electronic money and electronic living and electronic creating. And interacting in weird techno hippie ways that's what i see the future being Hell, i, I know it sounds work in, i work in film so 1500 quid a month i'll take it <laughs> you did you hear what you just said the thing is and you would think that you know that that's the thing most people will take it. Did you know that most people will take $250,000 to do almost anything? I mean, literally almost anything. $250,000. It's not like 10 million. It's not 20 million. Because for, for most of us who live in regular first world countries, $1,500 a month is actually decent. I mean, it's not great. I'm not going to have, uh, I'll have a box of a place to live. I'll have $400. I'll have a hundred, a hundred dollars a week to live off of. 
and boom, I'm done. But I have a place to live, and whatever I have, I can live within that world creating my things, right? And I don't need much more. And if I can create something that makes money, like content video or this, that, or the other, and I've said this, I said this way in the past. Well, like in the future, you're pen. Either, hold on, hold on. In the future, or a pen. Um, <laughs> The, oh, the future is you're either a content creator or a content consumer. That's it. That's all there is in the future. And my friend Josh Harris, who the documentary uh, that was made by Andy Timinar, and I love talking about both of them so much, but um, We Live in Public, um, which won a ton of awards. If you've never seen it, please, James, watch the movie. Um, Josh has talked about it, and he has a talk that's called The Evolution of Toothpaste which he starts to describe that in the future, because everything's basically free, that everything is sponsorships. So like your toothpaste ends up being a sponsorship and then like your cigarettes and your everything and you have these little dragonfly, you know, video recorders that are filming your daily life. And then there's those who don't want to have their daily lives filmed, but they want to watch other people's daily lives. And there's obviously enough of those in the world. And then, and then, and, and so you'll get this balance of watchers to, to creators that'll, that'll be a flux that of course the AI will find what fits better for each bubble and blah, 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 and compose the world and resounding chambers and sa da 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 And also AI creational characters that fit the bubble that fit perfectly for that demographic and group and all of it. And then within that, it would also have the way I believe AI would be thinking is that at the same time, it would also be uh, moving every single one of those outside resounding chambers into a cohesive ideology. That's what I think AI would do with humanity. They would, uh, they would, and I say they because it, it would definitely be many art of uh, like general intelligent I ideologies working together that would create a super AG a super uh, AI. So don't you super think, artificial. Don't you think the super AI is just going to kill us? Mm -mm. So I, I also believe this. Um, I believe the moment of singularity is the moment when time stops to exist and we all start to create. And um, it's almost like um, if you look at the idea of how the atomic bomb was created and the idea of how the particles, when they hit, they start to hit other particles and other particles and other particles and other particles. It just becomes this massive thing until the explosion happens. We are the absolute moment of that happening before the explosion happens. So I think that, and that explosion is the, uh, call it pre-evolutionary moment that nobody can explain that is called the moment prior to the Big Bang. That even NASA says, question mark, we don't know what the fuck this is. So that's what we are. And so that means that we are a sentient creation created by a sentient creational understanding it non of itself that then creates a sentient version of itself that does not understand its own reality and then it creates its own sentient version that it doesn't understand that it's better and bigger than that and blah, 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 infinitely infinitely and on infinite levels on infinite timescapes on infinite so super ai has always been around if that's the case which means that super ai is the creational thing which means that our creator is the ultimate creator of creators, which gives us the ability to be creators. And so there's a never ending creational existence machine, which means that anything that you can imagine has a world for it to live within. So even like if you're like JK Rowling, you just meditate inside your car while you're homeless with your two kids in the back and you start creating a world, that world actually exists. Like in reality, it's just not here. It's in its space where it evolved from. And where does it evolve from? Imagination. And what is imagination? Unexplainable. So now we're starting to understand like these cool fucking concepts of like why we're moving towards transhumanism. It's not bad. Eugenics in the end, fucked up to say, not bad.
Why do I say that? Because if I go 5,000 years in the back, I see Roman people throwing away babies that are in some way physically or mentally handicapped. Why? Because I can't deal with it, bro. I don't have the ability. I don't have the crops. I don't have this. I don't have that, right? So I have to do the best I can to build the best I can, to build the best army, to build the strongest people mentally, physically, spiritually. Have to. Why? Because otherwise we're going to get destroyed. And that's why 300 can go tie, uh, you know, against whatever. Because we understand ourselves. We are self-righteous. And now, is that a bad thing? No. Like, think about it. If I go to an AI machine and I go, here's my body, bro. And I go, here's my DNA. What's wrong with me, bro? The computer's going to be like, oh, you have a 98.9% chance to fucking get cancer of testicular, or this, that, and the other because you're smoking cigarettes, you're doing this, and you're doing that. And you eat this, and you do this, and you do that. If you were to change this, 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 you would have a 30 point or 5 point percent, you know, uh, algorithmic change in your uh, database, blah, 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 blah. And it will make you a better human, and you'll live longer. So AI will be the impetus for all silly humans to accept that it is all an illusion. I believe that it is the moment you you describe. One bajillion percent, Shelly. One bajillion percent is what I'm saying. That we are not living. This is not real. What we are is scientists from the future who recognize that we were no longer human. We made a world for ourselves to understand flesh, touch, smell, all the things that we forgot. And we go through this entire fucking blah, 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 fuck, blah, 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 and we come out of it. And and this is the, my imaginary thing is I come out of it and I'm on stage and I, I, I'm like, what the fuck? And lights are hitting me and I can't see the audience. And I'm like, holy fuck, that's the end of life. Oh, I'm holding my soul. Oh, my God. It fits right here. And the second that I put it into the machine, I immediately thrust it into the audience and I'm watching my life and I'm like, oh, oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God, look at the art piece. Look at this art piece that we're all making. Look at this art piece that we're all making. And that's fucking death. That's one of And there is no end to that process either the process of awe the process of creationism does never has a death i think of it as a sun and the sun shooting at a solar flare and that solar flare has no option but to go back because of the gravitational force of the fucking sun and it's the same thing with your soul your soul is a of the creation and it's gonna go right back and that's death death this acceptance of like I am all just like we are all that's power brother on a level that's like blah, 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 blah. and as soon as we all get that everything stops because there is no place after that it's only everything starts on itself and it all starts over again it's the it's the road in Taurus field it's the by Cambrian conceptual idea of where our brains were to where our brains are. It's it's all of it. It's all of it. It's the ants, it's the bugs, it's the birds, it's the bees, it's the children being created once per second. It's th this machine of, and that's just us. That's just us. And then Shelly says, yes, all possibilities are uh, will be experienced and reboot. She's so right. And that is what is super AGI. So anybody who fears it, anybody who's like, oh, my God, we're going too fast. Oh, my God, stop, stop, stop. No, dude, go, go, go. Because then we're getting closer and closer to being one. Then we're getting closer and closer to being together and loving each other and understanding each other and, 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 and finding out about ourselves through each other on what we're supposed to be doing in the first place, what we're supposed to be doing in the first place but, but what did we do we get confused we get in the muck of life we get the we have to pull it off bro we have to clean it off and uh, yeah and the only way to do that is to be thrown into it to go into the deep end of life and then it just 
flourishes out like let's say the 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 wheat from the chaff the 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 suds that reach the top the bubbles that go up it, it's all right in front of us the answers are all right in front of you at all times it says god is in everything why because god is in everything so it doesn't matter where you look it doesn't matter where you go it doesn't matter how deep you go into any hole you will find what creation the creationer the magical blah, 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 of the blah. <laughs> i mean that's what you're gonna find there's nothing else there but that there can't be anything else there but that why because it's the creator and you we we go oh well we were made in the image of the creator fuck yeah we were but you think the, the creator has two eyes, a brain, and a mouth, and a fuck you, bro. <laughs> no way. And you think the creator can embody the, a body? You know what, what? Probably can. Probably just has to push a button and go, oh, hey, guys, what's up, man? It's me, God. <laughs> Let's go hang out. Hey, look, I can make shit appear. Shit disappear. Ha, I'm fucking God. Fuck you. Sure. I'm sure it could happen, and possibly it has, and maybe we call those things aliens, and maybe we call those things fourth dimensional beings, maybe, we, because we don't know what the fuck that is, and maybe there's like another nine layers of elemental thought process and being and meditation and spiritual flowing energy and ghosts and all kinds of crazy shit that we just don't see because fuck, we're here like fucking horses with blinders on our side going through the roller coaster of life whether we like it or not whether we're trying to hold on to our loved ones who have died or the thing that hurt me or whatever to realize it's not even fucking real in the first place and then people are like that's a cruel joke no it's not it's the ultimate gift <laughs> it's the ultimate gift i'm giving you the ability to create whatever the fuck you want while you're here go whatever you want you could be a person who was born with no arms and no legs and you can make 20 million dollars a year marry a model and become a, a, a church saving uh, pastor no arms no legs no worries nick vizuzic real person goes around and tells people how beautiful they are and then at the end of every one of his shows he sits on a stool with his little chicken leg he calls it that i'm not making fun of him and he uses his little chicken leg for a beat machine he's like doo -doo Right? He has got one leg then. Huh? He's got one leg then. You said no arms and no legs. It's not. It's not even. It's like it's, it's literally like a little. It literally looks like this. Yeah, it comes out of his pants. It's just. It's just his leg. Like just an option of what was supposed to be a leg that never grew out. Right. But nonetheless, the guy is worth millions of dollars married a supermodel and was able to have two amazing children fully developed children now there's a way that that guy is on the street right now in new york fucking on a skateboard <laughs> give me a dollar <laughs> dollar two different mindsets bro both the exact same options we all have the same options and someone said to me yesterday like well, that's not an excuse to be an asshole, like someone said or did something within the group. And I was like, no, it's not. But then again, we're not the same vessels. We're just not. We're not in the same vessels. I have this big one, and he's got this tiny little fucking vessel. He has no fucking clue what's going on, lady. And you're yelling at him like he has a clue, because you do. But he doesn't. And then you're upset that he's doing stuff that he doesn't understand? You're upset at the blacksmith's son for being a blacksmith? And you think you're highly involved? Does that make sense to me? No, it doesn't. Oh, you're LGBTQ and you're accepting, but you don't accept when somebody gets angry? Like, go fuck yourself. Sorry, it's the truth. I give you reality and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's not, that's not fair. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, it's not fair, kid. Life isn't fair, kid. Life is your option to make it fair, kid. It's your option to live it the way you choose it. That's why we get to choose it. And that's why I've chosen to live like a crazy man. 
because I'm trying to wake people up. My gift on this earth is to wake others up. To say, yo, dude, this is not fucking real. None of this exists. I'm a magician and a hypnotist to prove to you that it doesn't fucking exist. That I can turn you the fuck off by snapping my fingers and saying sleep. Motherfucker. If that doesn't tell you something, if me doing something like this and, and it disappears and you're like, and you're having a moment. Bro, you need to start worrying about your perception and your value and understanding things. And Like you start thinking you need to grow. You're not growing. You're staying stuck. There's this uh, great quote from Roosevelt, his wife. She says, um, those with weak minds talk about people. Um, uh, uh, the next uh, group of people talk about uh, uh, things. And great minds talk about ideas. And that's just the truth. You know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. I'm turning into a transhumanist on a heavy level because I think, think I'm understanding it in a way that other people don't. And then again, I could be absolutely wrong. Uh, I could say the absolute opposite of this is no dude, we need to run away from computers. We need to learn how to meditate and really know ourselves. But guess what's going to, that's not going to happen. Like, I'm sorry. Sure. There'll be a group of people who go live in a cave uh, two two men and the and one man's son to write a book called the Zohar. Sure, bro, it'll happen. It's happened before, <laughs> so it's gonna happen again. When all the people run away and you have the glass houses and the robots, like Elon says, I want to have three robots for every human. Imagine if you had three robots for every one of you. Oh my god, that are all like ChatGPT ten. You know what? If if one of them could be a wizard, one of them could be a cleric, and one of them is a warrior, I could play Dungeons and Dragons again. In real life. In yeah. real life. With other people who like that life. Dude, you think I'm joking here. I'm not. Imagine. I'm not. In, no, I think, stop. I think, Imagine, you're genuine, I think you're genuinely sincere yeah, about what, think what about is going to happen. I'm not convinced that you're right. I, dude, it's sick. But think about you have your own enough money, right? And now you don't have to work anymore. And now you can do the thing that you really like. I love cosplay, bro. I love it when I have the money to be able to make my swords and hang out with the people and go to those conventions that I have to save up for all year. Dude, go live at Con fucking Land where they have a room where it's like all built for like learning how to build and make cool swords and there's classes and there's this and that. And all you have to do is take your $1,500 a month and give it to that group. And then all of a sudden, that group has a 100, a 1,000 people who are willing to put their $1,500 in a month and agree to a certain amount of time to go to that school, to go to that uh, educational space, to have that building, that have that understanding. And then you can go from that one to another one. You can go to the woodworking one, the metal one, the glass one, the, 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 and each one does a different thing. The wood one does instruments made out of wood, furniture design, this, that, the other. And it's all every technique that's ever been created. And it's all there, right there with the machines and the robots that know how to make it and show you how to do it. And you then go, oh, I have this idea. And we all become producers. Sort of kind of like Brainwash, the, the street artist. If you've ever watched the movie, I exit through the uh, gift shop where he learns, in essence, that Banksy isn't a person, but a group. He doesn't say it in the film, but he he's like, fuck, now I get it. Now I see how he's able to fucking have everything everywhere all the time because he has fucking six other people working with him. And it's fucking, it's so much easier when you're at two o'clock in the morning with six people who all know what the fuck they're doing, and you go, go, done, go, done. Done. We're done in like five minutes. You know what I mean? And, and you had all the pre-scheduling. You have all the knowledge. You have all the connections to the art world. You have all the bullshit that you need. Boom. Banksy's uh, an ideology, bro. And it's been proven in the last little bit of life that Banksy is not just one person. Sure, Robert started when he started. Yes, he's from somewhere in Essex or wherever the hell he is. And, and yes, it's that guy. Yeah, curly hair guy they took pictures of five years ago. They said that wasn't him. That's who it is, bro. And, and, and does it matter? No. Not at this point anymore. Why? Because it's an ideology. It's an idea. It's like Jesus. 
It's an idea. And that idea grows when more people put into it. And then that becomes a consciousness. I'm connecting to that consciousness to all of the other people who have connected to that consciousness and consciousness does not fucking die you do not die we do not die there is no death in this life this is the experience that we're getting to go through the movie that we're getting to watch we are the creators we are the producers we are the writers we are the directors we are the lighting we are the everything to our existence and if we don't take care of each piece of ourselves. then there's pieces of ourselves that fall apart and then we fall apart and then our body falls apart and then we die faster than we should have and then we call those people the 28 and under who came here exploding like phoenixes like going oh my fuck yeah <laughs> and then we go whoa what a fucking life bro that's a tell you what, most of my friends, if they've dropped in, or friends or family, if they've dropped in on this video, thinking they're going to see something about me and my films, are probably thinking, what the bloody hell I, <laughs> it's, it's Jack singing on. <laughs> but I mean, isn't it, isn't it like, like, let's, let's do this. Let's tie your thinking <laughs> No, I could do it. I promise you. Think about what your films have been so far, the ones that you've created. And give me an overall about like where they're from and what they come. Right? You were trying to be original. Let's just talk about The Witches, right? The, what, what's the name of the film again? The Witchers of... Oh, The Witch Hunters Are Coming. The Witch that, was Hunters are that was just basically seeing something on daytime TV and then thinking what would be a cool twist on that. And um, flipping it so that it's not a bailiff or a cop, but it's a unrealistic witch hunter, right. and then and then throwing in pop culture. Um, but so isn't that isn't that like the ultimate production of what I'm talking about? Like what Mr. Brainwash is and how he understood. Oh, I don't have to make the art. Like, I don't have to make the movie. I just need to find the right person for the right role to fit that thing so I can become my own Leonardo da Vinci. I can become my own Michelangelo and have a hundred understudies. That's what a producer, that's what a director is. Is a person who understands the, the idea of a, of, a, of a written document so well in their mind and in their visual interface, they go, oh, oh, shit. I know a guy who shoots in this one style that'll be fucking awesome. And I know this one actor. He's always oh, absolutely ridiculous. He's going to do this one role in a way that nobody else can do it. And this person is going to do this. And this person is going to do this. You didn't fucking make the movie in the end. No offense. You were the producer. Producer, you were the conductor at the at the at the front of a bunch of people who spent fucking twenty million years of their life learning how to play one fucking instrument, and you're over here going. I'm not saying that the conductor's not important, but I'm just saying there's a bit of gravitas there, right? It's a, it's a performance art. It's a performance art, and it goes back. It goes back to this idea of what we're talking about. We're trying to take the essence of ourself and express it to the world. Your essence, after the life that you've lived through whatever you've been through, gives you an ability to laugh at the mundane of life and also add in things that you're seeing from the world around you. So what are you doing? You're a machine that eats through emotion and visual interface and then vomits back out stuff. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome, bro. I, I, I'm, not, it's I'm, so not sure, cool. I'm not sure I like the term vomit stuff out. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, there Whatever, is listen, there's only There's only a couple ways saying. the info comes out, okay? There's only a couple ways the info comes out. It's either vomit, poop, or uh, words, and words are just as vomity as poop and and uh, and pee pee. Okay, so what I mean by that is that very 
uh, tertiary understanding of words for each one of us that we have, right? It's a very Nietzsche idea that emotionally I connect to a word differently than you do. And so therefore you hear it or feel it differently. So no matter how much I talk, you're still going to have a totally different point of view of whatever I was talking about, unless I'm able to like literally break it down one step at a time. And then I'm teaching. We're not having a conversation anymore. Well, we come up right? with completely different points of view because you're, you're of the opinion that there's creators and souls. And I, my personal mindset is that there isn't. So you're there a buffoon. You I believe, are that, I believe that, that there is no such thing as a soul. We're just basically biological things. Yeah, but how did the biological get created? That's the next question. And how did it, and how does it work? You. So you're saying that you're saying that from nothing, from nothing, absolute nothingness, no one was involved. Not I'm, anything. I'm saying that, no, I'm me, saying that I don't know. Right. That's different. That's it. So I'm not saying that there is. I'm not saying that there is a creator. I'm saying I don't know if there's a creator. What I mean, so, from yeah, my point so, of view, what I what I do know is that the creator that is pitched to us from various religions is not a nice person. But that's a, that's that's by the by. But if there's a creator that just click their fingers and suddenly there was a there was an explosion or the world happened or whatever and we were just left to our devices from yeah. that it was just biology it's what it's just biology, biology. right just but biology. what is biology but, but the I'm question is and, and if there's more life on this planet now than there was at the time of the creator doesn't that mean that the creator is constantly creating new souls well yeah of course and if, and if they're doing that, why can't they make the place better? Uh, because that's that's it's not it's okay. So why why did they now? Create well, well, I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna try and answer. I'm gonna do my best to answer the questions I can through the information that I've learned in my life. So the first answer to your question is why do bad things happen to good people? And the answer is because in some level God separates itself from the creation, just like a painter would from the painting. Once the paint is on the on the on the on the canvas, I walk away. I allow people to come into the museum and say that's crap, that's great, and I allow people to say I'm a genius even though I feel like I'm not because genius isn't of me it's out of me so that's a real artist right and so that's what God is on some level God just creates and says here you go bro I've given you the option to choose I've given you the option to make this place amazing because if we all work together bro if everybody on the planet really were to work together bro there would be no hunger. There would be no world starvation. There would be no yeah. need okay. for okay. shit. Why but create? Why create a planet with tectonic plates? There's no need for there to be tectonic plates. There'd still be tides and water and land masses and stuff. Why no, create so, so a planet no, with tectonic so, plates? Once again, because tectonic plates, as we have recently seen in Libya and Morocco and all this kind of stuff, has killed. Tens of thousands of innocents. It was un it was an unnecessary thing to have. Sure. Why, why create it? Why create a planet with that? Unless you're so fraud, you or you're a bit of a git no, who wants to see people suffer. You're 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 too you're too low. No offense. You're you're too micro instead of macro. Get out of that. Get out of that completely because it's not involved in me. Like if I'm the creator, I, and I like so like think of like. Like anything, like like if you if you have a child, you don't want to be a helicopter parent where the child becomes an exact replica of you, because then you didn't raise a child; you raised a, a automaton of you. You have to to allow that child to break a leg. You have to allow that child to put paint on their face and blueberry ink. You have to allow that to happen on some level. Does that mean you just let go and say, hey, kid, go do whatever you want and be whatever you want? And sure, transgenderism and pills and whatever because you think you're a woman at five? No, of course not. We do not allow for stupidity in the world because uh, that's just straight stupid. You know, like, hey, 
hey, third, third grader, do you want to talk about masturbation? The fuck does a third grader know anything about masturbation? What, you, what are we you've, doing? In the you've, you've taken a step away from my, my point, though, Paul. My point is, Paul, if a creator cr uh, wants not an asshole, why <laughs> create such a flawed planet? So once again, you're looking at it too micro and not macro enough. The no, creator I'm not. doesn't. The, the, no, the I'm creator not. doesn't. No, I'm not. Yeah. If if a if a creator is omnipotent, knows everything, can do everything, and mm -hmm. is all all loving, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they mm -hmm. wouldn't do. They would not do That's not, that. It's not true. It's not true. If I'm a scientist and I take vinegar and I take uh, and I make a, a volcanic reaction. I don't know exactly how that volcanic reaction is going to happen cell per cell unless I get a quantum computer and I can uh, videotape the actual explosion happening but, and then I can pull, pull it back pull, down pull, and pull, I can pull, say, pull. no, no, wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. I'm God is a good scientist. God knows everything, is omnipotent, has, has a plan which is unnecessary because if you have a plan, that means... You want something to happen, and if you're omnipotent, bang, the plan has happened. So then the answer is that so, we're just living through the experience of the plan that's already, but, already happened. So, and so there, then, so there and, is no so there is no plan, there is no benevolent creator. Something in science, which you don't know yet, happened right. in the past and created yes. the planet. Which is right, but then again, this planet. we're going through two, two different uh, ideas here. We're going through turtle on the earth, or turtle holding the earth, and then turtles infinitely down, and that because that's one conceptual idea that we're talking about, uh, uh, which is you know a Grecian concept of of never ending, having no god concept, um, and then the other is the idea that there's creationism, and the ultimate question in creationism is. What is the thing that created all creating? And let me let me read what Jaden just wrote. The living soul of a man, once conscious of its power, cannot be quelled. Great. If you feel, if you look at it in a big perspective, you're focusing in on the bad and not the good. Reactions are going to happen. Causes and effects are the reproductions of greatness to a degree. I kind of understand where Jaden's coming from. So, and I'm saying the same thing, right? So you say, well, something in the past created the thing. And I say, okay, well, what created the aliens that created the humans and what created that? And what's the creator of that? And what's the creator of that? And what's the ultimate creating thing? And the only thing that I can get to is a, a source of exploding energy that just goes and it doesn't do anything else. It just creates. And the creation yeah. is creation of creations. So, in other words, J.K. Rowling's world was created through the creation. And then that world is real. There's a fucking Quidditch game going on right now in another universe that's actually real. And people are watching it. And they are magical beings. And there's, they're all there. It's real. Star Wars, real. Star, Star Trek, real. In its own universe. In its own thing. It's really there. And soon enough, 10 years, we'll have the ability to go to that fucking place. And live in that world with swords. Yeah. And you when what, you die, I'll tell you, what, you I'll wake bet, up. I'll you bet you my 5% of the pen lids against your 5% of the pen lids that in, that in five years' time, we are not going to another dimension where we can experience Star Wars or uh, J.K. Rowling's what? Quidditch. <laughs> it, five, I, without a doubt now, now, because I know, I know for a fact, only because I'm dealing with a project right now that we won first place in, um, in Miami, an NFT project that we built called Boatheads. And we got connected with Niantic Labs, which created Pokemon, which created um, um, another really good game. And basically the idea is that uh, it's an AR glasses 
that while you're on your boat, you're able to see the depth of the water. You're able to see where you're supposed to be on the water, like which way is the right way and the wrong way. Also, uh, visual representations of marinas, the distance from you to the marina, how many people have visited the marina, how many people are at the marina, um, uh, how many times you visited, all of this within your NFT that is a character of a boathead uh, with a full body. And over time, uh, your boathead gets barnacles. On, on uh, full moon, uh, your boat head turns into one of four characters, a vampire, a wolverine, a zombie, or a mummy. Um, it's a, a full world. A well, yeah, full that's, 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 that's a computer game, for want of better term. No, it's, it's not a it's computer just a, It's just a virtual reality, you know? I'm, not to, I'm talking about a... You're saying that you can travel across universes, not just playing a game. You're talking about going across universes. Yeah. So it, we will. It will seem as though that's what we are no, doing. No, like if we talk about no, 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 not seem no, like. No. You're just talking about VR. I'm no, talking, no, no, no. Are I'm you not, saying, I'm not talking about are you VR. saying that no. Doctor Strange style? We are yes, genuinely no. going to no. another universe. Yes and no. Let me explain. Conscious light. Okay. So if we are working with Elon Musk and we are working with Neuralink and we are connecting our neural synapses and our firing of chemicals and we are willing to put ourselves within a machine that then in, sense, in a sense places us into a theta wavelength and allows our brain to then react electronically and chemically, which is what we are, and we then and accept the Mission Impossible game, motherfucker, yeah, 100% in the next 10 years. Well, that's just, that's just advanced VR. That's not going it, it, into another universe. What are we? I well, just gave here. you the absolute representation well, of what you are. You are a biological machine yeah. that has yeah. electronics and chemicals that create the visual the auditory and the kinesthetic of what you live. And I'm telling you that in the next 10 years, we will have the ability in every single way to be able to take a pill to make ourselves happy, sad, intelligent, this, that, or the other. And we will have also the ability to not only chemically induce, but also physically, mentally induce states of wavelengths, which will then allow hypnotists which will be ourselves or our AR partner that is our Tony Robbins in our own life that would be pushing us to be a better thing because it knows better than you. And it knows better than you because as a library so of I'm not going through a portal, I'm going to Hogwarts world without yes, exactly. having taken some, some substance or put on some headset or having some chip put in my head, I can't do that then. Is that what you're saying? That yes. Is, and the that reason, ain't happening in five years' time. Okay. Ten, ten, ten years. Ten. And, and, that, yeah, and that's when Elon Musk wants to have the fifth version of Neuralink, is ten to fifteen years. He's already said it. Said it. And that at that level, and, and also, a, a, a AGI is definitely gone and happened by ten years. Easy. Easy. At the level and rate that we're going right now, oh yeah, oh yeah. And th there's a there's a really cool map that was created recently that shows every technological invention that ever happened up to the point of the computer, and it literally looks like a like we're talking about an X Y graph. It literally looks like this. So we just now, after five thousand, ten thousand years that we know of. For the first time that we know of, now mind you, there could be other past existences and other worlds that have lived before. The, they got covered by the mud or they got this and that or whatever you want to say. But what we know of right now, we have just figured it out for the first time. We just had our first conscious heartbeat thought. <gasps> just first one. It just now happened. And we're getting to live through it. It's fucking amazing, bro. It's absolutely amazing, bro.
we are getting to be the ones that live through the renaissance of renaissances like no other bro you understand how much michelangelo or david or any of the people in the past would love to be where we are right now with no worry of food and no worry of housing are you, are you joking and air conditioning and ice cubes get the fuck out of here and cars and travel less than in less than five hours to go from one planetary space to another planet that i can get to fucking london in eight hours used to take six months on a boat and that's because they didn't know what they were doing yet and then they figured it out oh it takes only two months to get across we don't have to go this way <laughs> but i'm saying right how much uh, a person like Nikola Tesla or or like any of the great minds of our past would be like on like cloud bajillion living on this life. Like, oh, my God, we got whatever we want here, bro. This is great. This is fucking awesome. My wife didn't die of diphtheria while we were traveling over the uh, continental divide of the United States while Indians were trying to kill my children and rape my mom. Get the f*** out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 undoubtedly, as far as scientific um, advancement, we've yeah. never been we've never been more advanced. Have humans ever been adma ad as advanced um, socially and and right. mentally? That's a whole other question. Um, right, and, and right. I think that, they, to some extent, I think to some extent, we've taken a bit of a step back. But I think for some things, we've undoubtedly taken a step forward. Um, but, <laughs> so it's like, uh, so to, to, to go back to it, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think you, is, as far as like what we're talking about with religion or whatever, I just think that maybe you haven't delved hard enough Judaism or Buddhism and really really delved into those religions because man they're so similar one they both believe in reincarnation they both believe everything is a form of energy they both believe that the lifestyle that you should live is a pious one they both believe that the actions of your life should be as minute as possible um like it's 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 all the process of trying to live a good life and not create drama and trauma around you that's what it's about now, fanaticism, on the other hand, will screw that all up. And you will have, have people who think that it's okay to kill. And you'll have people that it's okay to do this. And it's okay to have sex with children because God said so. And it was written by a man. And it wasn't man. Sure. Sure. 1,000%. Sure. Why? Choice. Why? Intention. Why? God. Why? Why? You might be like, why would God do that? Because that's the ultimate gift. Again, we get back to ultimate gift. The ultimate gift is the idea in and of itself of getting to exist. That's it. I think that for I some people, I think that for some people, it is miserable. And right, it's because a, they don't. And it's not a gift. I felt that way, James. I've had conversations with you about this where I've been in my massive amounts of dep de depression and said, this world sucks. I want to die. Give me a gun. Horrible existence. What is wrong with me? And my answer to that is I had a bad relationship with myself and I listened to other people and tell me who I am. And it was when I realized that I am nothing and I'm okay with being nothing and I'm okay with understanding that that nothingness is actually the most amazing greatness that there is. I have nothing to stress or worry about anymore. It's the most amazing thing and, and, in the world. And, and take that one step further and accept that there's not a heaven, a hell, or a creator who's enforcing anything or has opinions about stuff. Then you just live a good life. That's, uh, that's, yeah, I think that that's, that's what you should do. You know. Yes, and I think that, so here's, 
here's my crux on that one, right? So I don't believe that you need religion to have ethics and morals. I don't. But I do believe that you do need community. You do need a group of people that have the resounding chamber that you have to work together. Now, that doesn't mean that you all have to be exactly the same and be automaton because that, that doesn't work either. But you do need a, a group of people uh, that will, in the same, all waters rise all ships, right? And so all rising tides rise all ships is the line, right? Because all water, you know, all boats go up and down with, with the water. So it's the same. If you have, uh, it, you know, what's another line? Higher slowly, fire quickly, which is the same mentality. Um, I need to have fences because fences make good neighbors. My fence around me is my boundaries that I put out so that I know whether you're being cool with me or not. Uh, so a friend of mine said, very smart kid, super genius, but also absolutely insane, which is why I love him so much. His name's Joel Kalafari. He's in Israel. He lives in uh, Sfat, which is the most north more than like spot in Israel, the most religious as well. It's also where the Zohar was created. Uh, Rabbi Shimon Baruchai, I believe is his name. The idea here is that, um, says that if a man is burrowing underground to come into your home, you have the right to kill him. Why? Because he's finding a way through your fence without you seeing him. In other words, he's a mole in your life. Now it also says that if your father is the one doing this, you do not have the right to kill him. If your fa father is being a mole in your life, you do not have the right to kill him. On the other hand, if the son is being a mole in the father's life, the father has all the right to kill him. So what is it saying? It's saying that a father will never kill his son. A father will never destroy what it created. But the son, by all means, will flick fingers and call the father out and say all things about the father. But the father will never do that to the child. A real father will never do that to the child. And so it answers a lot of the questions that you're asking on some level. Um, it also might create more questions. But Are you suggesting saying, that the the I mean, if we go by the God that is in both of our kind of spheres, because I don't really know about the Norse or right. the Greek or Buddhism or something. So you're saying that the Father, um, being God, when he wipes out everyone with floods or he turns people to salt for just turning around and endorses X, Y, and Z, horrifically immoral thing by current sure. standards, is... You can't criticize it? Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it's being... It's not saying that you can't be critical. That's a choice. Criti criticism is a choice. But it's also a very low-level understanding. So, once again, like we talked about... Uh, we talk about people, we talk about things, and we talk about ideas. So you're just talking about things and not ideas and so the the process would say to you yeah uh, i i'm not there that's not where i so surely by critic by critiquing we're, 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 things and being sure. critical that's how we move on if people didn't criticize things we'd never have invented the wheel they'd have gone that's stupid dragging that thing along and somebody went I've got a better idea because that's stupid. I'm going to build a wheel. And sure. that's how we progress, you know? And, and, I mean, yeah, but, and in but, but, Hold on. But when you, when you look at how wheel is created, you're dealing with math. You're dealing with uh, something that has an underlying process to it, like the Feinberg constant. Uh, 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 which is like this really intense number that always happens over and over again within an infinite number, which is uh, 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 it, like, so, you know, the, do you know the fine, you know, do you know what I'm talking about at all in any way? Oh man, it's such a heavy conversation, but basically there is, 
there's this idea that in a system that is du dual uh, du dualistic, it will always come back to it would always come back to its place of source. Uh, it always and it, and it shows this mathematically, and it's a just really ridiculous number. But what happens is that. Um, and, and one of the ways that they explain it now, I'll, I'll, if you want, I'll, I'll send you the video. It's from a uh, Veritasium. It's actually really interesting, but um, the, 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 it, it all comes, it all starts off with um, the way that animals react to other animals coming into an environment. So, He's talking about like when wolves move into a new area, the rabbits within that area will double the amount of children that they have comparative to how many wolves are in the area. And this just happens naturally. Now, what happens is that that system will start to have like weird ups and downs based on how many wolves and how many rabbits and back and forth and blah, 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 blah. At one point, it turns into on like this doubling and tripling and quadrupling and it just turns into 1632 64 and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it just goes to do and it just starts all over again and this number happens infinitely over and over and over and over and over infinitely within it so that means it's already part of the process now we can also start getting into the god particle concept of something that is, that is not, that exists, that doesn't exist, that has weight, that doesn't have weight. And now we're talking about something we can't understand. We can then get into Planck's constant or Planck's idea, which is that we're here on this idea. We bring it down to a level. We bring it down to a level and we start to not understand it. And we're still four, five more layers away from where it turns into absolute, uh, uh, theory and uh, just idea because we, we just can't understand it anymore. And so that's like, if you take just like, like, just take an atom, you take an atom and you break it down, you look at it. Oh, look, here's a nucleus, an electron, a proton, break that down. Oh, look, there's quarks, break that down. Oh, look, there's the God particle and right. So we've just gone down four and now we're at a place where we don't understand anything else. And we have five more layers to go. And, and we're already there and we're already there math we're in the mathematical world of oh it's string theory oh it's it's quantum worlds oh it's this oh it's that and that's already going towards that fourth and seventh and eighth level that we don't understand we're such stupid brains bro we're stupid brains that think we know that are making a machine that knows more than we know and it's like, just like it's this weird um, fractal. That's a fractal that keeps being a fractal, and we are part of the moment of the fractal being a fractal. That's the gorgeousness of it. Is that it's never ending, and it's awesome, and it's beautiful, and it's always changing, and it's always uh, effectively new, and it's always effectively old, and it's always effectively different, and yet it's the same, and yet... <laughs> That's awesome, dude, to be part of. Whether I'm in a machine that I just agreed to be locked into for whatever amount of time until my machine turns off, and then I get thrown back out, I don't know if that's it. I don't know. I've had a dream where that's what it was when I was on a DMT experience that literally I was connected to a machine that was very matrix looking, but I was able to clock in and clock out, like literally go in and play a life and then come out. And when I came out of it, I literally fell to my knees and cried of how beautiful it was. I was literally telling people as they were going on, dude, you have no idea how good that is you have no idea how good what you're about to it's like almost like i had just gotten off the roller coaster and people were getting on to the roller coaster and they were about to clip in and i'm like oh, guys you have no idea how good that was it was so good oh my god it's so good and then i'm going down the stairs with my friends i'm like oh my god it's so good let's ride it again let's ride it again
That's what we're experiencing, bro. It's like a water slide or a roller coaster or it's a designed game. There is a beginning and an end for this ride. But you and I do not, like, I'm not me. This is not Paul. I'm not Paul. I'm not. That was the name given to me, bro. And I'm not my eyes. I'm not my hair. I'm not my nails. I'm not my heart. I'm not my brain. I'm not my synapses. I'm not the chemicals. I'm not any of that. That's the fucking car I'm driving. But that's not me, motherfucker. I'm not the magician. I'm not the singer. I'm not an actor. I'm not a performer. I'm not a talking head. I'm not any of those things. What I am, on the other hand, is a potential energy source that wants other people to understand their own potential energy source. That's what I am. And that's why I created this idea. That's why I did the 365 for two years. Every single one of the videos are always about, hey, man, look at what you can do and look at how you can create and look at what you can be and look at us awesomeness. And then I was like at this event and a woman comes up to me and she goes, bro, where's your videos? And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> I don't know her. She's like, yeah, I was introduced to you four years ago. I've been watching your videos for two years straight and then it just stopped and it really broke me because like, there's something about you that I love watching, like your rawness, your just ability to not give a fuck and just be able to go Bleh. like, that's cool. I want to learn how to do that. And I'm like, I don't know how to teach you that. I don't know how to teach That was a, Dave Chappelle. This is a great bit, by the way. I just saw him live. Uh, they were recording a special and he says, uh, um, you know, some young comedian came up to me and asked me, teach me to be funny, Dave Chappelle, because you're so funny. Teach me how to be funny. And he goes, no, dude. I don't know how I do it. I'm definitely not teaching you. And then he goes, uh, uh, you know, he talks about cheating with his wife. And then his wife was, uh, he gets home one night at like three in the morning. And his wife was like, you know, the truth is, yeah, I was worried about you. I don't know where you were. And I don't know what's going on. And he goes, and that's when I pulled out these keys. I gave them to her keys that she's never seen before. And I said, this is a safety deposit box. It's for you. Everything you need is there. You'll be taken care of for the rest of your life. The whole audience. Yeah, yeah, we love you. Yeah, you're awesome, Dave Chappelle, right? Wife comes up to me the next day. She starts hitting me. She's, There's nothing in that safety deposit box. And I said, oh, shit, nothing? She goes, yeah, nothing's there. Except the damn joke book. And he goes, oh, thank God. Because listen, listen, all you have to do is just read those jokes the way I wrote them. You'll be fine. <laughs> So it goes back to the, I don't know how I do it, but he does. You know what I mean? Like, he knows yeah. how he's funny. Everyone has their own unique gifts. Your unique gift is that you can read some of this stuff that no one else is going to be asked to read. <laughs> it's true. And then, and then throw together dozens of philosophies into your idea and why and why not? not but it's something i'm not gonna do because it's, I, it's I not your, genuinely it's, can't be bothered it's not your cup james no. it's not and there's nothing wrong with that it's your cup to be the guy who went to 300 or 200 uh, competitions and has a film and does a thing and he's working on another project and th that's your story and it's a beautiful story which is why we're having this conversation in the first place. It's a bit of a Shakespearean right? tragedy at the moment, but it's a story nonetheless. And it will come to an extent. But so is mine. And so is Elon Musk's. And so is Paris Hilton's. And so is Tom Hanks. And they're all sad stories. So is the kid with no arms and no legs who became a $20 million preacher. Yeah, there's days when that guy wakes up and does not want to be alive. I promise you. Oh, of course. I would. So, so then we're all Greek tragedies, bro. And if anything, the thing that the stoicism teaches us is to laugh at the stupidity of the thing that we're living in because they know it's not real in the first place. And yes, I agree with you. The more that we are connected to technology, the less we are connected to humanity. The less we are connected to creationism. Because we are separating it's, ourselves. It's, it's, it's dangerous to say this isn't real. 
because no, I, then you you don't take responsibility because it's like it doesn't matter because now it's written it's actually real i am there i am flesh and blood and i'm having to live through it as is every one of your watch what what your watchers as is you this isn't this isn't fake you know we're here I, we're well, here it, and is, now. it is and it isn't right i am here now but i'm not here now because once again i'm not me i'm not this character you see bro I am not the, like Jim Carrey when he went through his fucking thing and he did that thing where he's uh, on the carpet and he's walking around the girl and he's like, ooh, I smell this perfume that's here in front of me, but I don't see you. And she's like, but we're here for the icons. And he's like, icons, it's so stupid. Like, what, icons? I'm an icon? We're all icons. You just want to point a finger at me and be like, oh, he's great. Why? Because I entertained you? Because I became a character for you named Jim Carrey? I'm not Jim Carrey. I'm not an actor. I'm going to go be a painter. Go fuck yourself. And he became a great painter. Why? Because he's trying to do the same thing I'm expressing. There is no it. There is only be. There is no one way. There is only way. There is only experience. And there is no, you have to be this and you have to be this. No, dude. We are. And we are being. And I. Yes, but but to be a good to be a good being, there are certain things you should do. Now you're getting into religion. No, not not on the, yeah. not on a religion yeah. basis. Yeah. Yeah. Of course not. On, a, yes, on just is. on just being a good human being, you should not kill people. So that, well, where do you get where? Do you, okay, so intrinsically, we all understand good and bad right i understand the difference between a caress and a slap period sure. period okay. you should try and make the world a better place in whatever so I'm way gonna go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back to it not all of us are in the same cup some of us experience at a higher level than others and i need something in the middle that keeps us all together so that i just did a cross bro we we need we are still animals we are still part of the tree of life we are not separate from the tree looking at the tree we are part of the tree and so for us to then look at the tree and be like oh look at us we're so intelligent that we are not even the tree dude we're getting to a point where we're genetically modifying ourselves we're at a point now where we are no longer going to be human as humans were made but as humans want to be made that's not far evolved. from now. As humans is evolved. That, but is that, isn't it's just, that? It's just the evolution. It's just, that's all so we're right. running. It's just that technology. So then, then if that's the case, genetically modified nano babies ready for the hive is a hundred years away. And then there is no option for a choice. Then we're part of the Borg. And then we forget humanity and then we make an existence called a video game called life that we go through so that we can remember what it's like to be human but who start the game say again we're not in the timeline and you're going to say we're at all times i should imagine but we used to say we're not in the timeline that we're before that we before bad decisions were made that made us into borg um Cyborgs. Uh, and, uh, not possible. Yeah, because we you, have the opportunity uh, to I'm not gonna answer, do that. I'm going to answer it for you. Not possible because of the technology that we're using right now. Technology in and of itself is uh, placeholders uh, or memory cards or memory chips uh, throughout throughout time that are handed to us through the itself that it already shows it to you through the seashell through the uh through the plant life through the thing around you it shows you the math it shows you the thing it's in it already and it shows you how to do it itself and shows you how to build it itself shows you how to meditate shows you how to connect to your breathing shows you how to eat correctly it, it's all there in front of you so by that theory is god's great plan that we all become robots. No, it's God's great plan that we all become God. It's God's great plan that we all become creators. 
we understand what being God is like. And so then we understand God because we are beca because we become gods ourselves. That's the ultimate idea. It's the same as a father having a child and the child turning into a father that has its own child. And then the father who has his own child then recognizes oh, the hardships my dad went through and the things that my father, oh, my baba, oh my dad, oh my dad, oh my dad. And what are we doing, right? There's 200 and some odd, in just Judaism, there's 216 different names of God. Why? Because each one is a tertiary understanding of the idea of a creator. Because I cannot understand it. So all I can do is say, hey, there's a idea in my head and it's sort of like this dad character and he's very angry at me when because i'm angry at my son when he doesn't listen to me i'm i'm super upset when i've taken the time to be like yo dude like i need you to do like this with me let me show you how and then my son goes go you dad forget i want to do it i get upset i go okay okay son We'll wait. We'll wait for you to be ready. And when you're ready, we'll do it. Okay, kid. It's time to try again. I don't want to try. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's, that's, that's not God, though, is it? That that means you've got a flawed God who's not an opposite. And he's not all no. because God. No, it's quite knows. the opposite. It's if, quite, if, if, it's quite because the opposite. God would have known that was going to happen. He knows that's going to happen. Yeah. So, so. So, so. So how can he be disappointed with something that he knows is going to happen? Because there's choice. Yeah. The painting he, is he, allowed. He knows, he knows that when given choice, that's what's going to happen. No. Incorrect. So you're saying that God doesn't know everything? God gives the opportunity for choice separating itself from the painting allowing the painting to change in front of it but he still knows what everything's got what's going to happen it's like i said i give you i give you a mars bar and i give you a mars bar and a snickers bar and i know that you shouldn't eat the snickers bar and i know that you're going to eat the snickers bar because i'm omnipotent i know what you're going to do because I know mm -hmm. everything. I know right. everything that's going to happen in the future, everything that's going to happen in the past. So I and can't the, be disappointed when I know it's going to happen. Um, because I created that being uh, that right. chooses this choice. I understand where you're coming from. But disappointment in and of itself is an idea i'm only trying to describe from one understanding of a human trying to understand god i said that at the beginning so i don't understand it i'm just trying to give an uh, uh, version of understanding it to try and express it in a way that is un unexpressible i cannot express the creation or -er. i cannot i could say god is not a cup god is not a pack of cigarettes god is not this god is not that god is not a cup god is not this i am not god you're not god nothing is god but god is, but god is everywhere but god, but god is everywhere man god. so he is a, so he is a packet of cigarettes it, it's not and it is because it separates itself from the creation again so the the idea that we talked about where the sun and this thing flies back the Zohar expresses that what God did was it separated itself nine times through these tinted windows that allowed the amazingness of this energy source to coalesce and cool down to form. And in that formation, it is no longer part of it. It wasn't part of it as it sent it out. As it started to let it go, it is out there by itself. It's doing its own thing. But it's still the fucking creator. It still has the option to do whatever the fuck it wants. It made but the as, program. But as an omnipotent being, when it did that, it knew what was going to happen. Right. And the idea was to understand and remember humanity. 
And why wouldn't it understand? It's omnipotent. It knows everything. Because it gets to a point of... You're creating put a limitation. You're now trying to put a limit on him. There is, no limit. What, or what there, is no limit. there is no limit to creationism because on the other side of what you're talking about is the absolute opposite of what you're talking about. So in the sense that you're saying that there's a God that knows and does everything that there is, there's also a God that knows absolutely nothing and is nothing. Why? Because it's the only way for creation to be able to be existing. So it needs to be able to create a machine in which it creates and knows what's happening, yet doesn't know what's happening and allows it to be, which is sort of kind of like what we're fucking living in. And the only way for it to have a way to it create more and be more is to be the ultimate creator that allows all creations and all ideas and all things to happen so that you can get to a point where you itself idea can become the creator that allows all things to be and all things to create so that you can be part of the process as well. But you have to go through the game to get to that process. What? To remember what it is to be human. To remember but what it is. Us, you, and I, you and I as humans aren't going to be omnipotent beings. We're not going to be God. Yes. Yeah, we will. No, we that's what it, that's what yeah we will that's what this is about yeah we will and then, and then so every and then there'll be an infinite number of infinitely knowledgeable so, infinitely powerful beings there all there already are and we are that hello no no, no i'm not yeah oh yeah oh yeah you are because you're living with me and I believe what I believe. And guess what? My reality is real. And my ideas are real in my world. But you in just my... said you weren't real. I... Dude, James, stop being third dimensional, brother. You're holding on to something that's not real and saying it's real. You can't do that. Because what we're talking about is a level above the game. We're no longer in the game at this point. If we talk about being out of the game, then we have to look at it from being out of the game. And that means that we were in a game. I think and that, I, know, I, I'm, and I, I disagree. I think that you have to accept that what we got around us, what is here, what I can pinch here, that's real. That's me. That's what I am. And the and hope that, that, that yes, that it is. I'm actually is some real. other person playing an Xbox and controlling me and looking at from on afar. No, I am. I am who I am. You are Paul, Paul sat there in America on her face yeah. time call with me. That's who yeah. you are. You're not something else. That's you. That's what you are. I'm. I'm. I'm having. That's not me. That's me having an experience. But that's not me. You're still placing you're still placing that your thing, your consciousness in some way, shape, or form that is in a physical representation is somehow you. And it's not. It's re reactionary processes of things that have happened to you to make you you in the process of now through the experience, but none of that is you. But it's just biology. I, like I said before. An hour ago, it's just biology. It's it's what, the consequence of what I'm saying. Consciousness has not been proven. Consciousness has not been proven. Reality has not been proven. We don't know what either one of those things are, and yet we are trying to create realities and trying to create consciousness. You see what I'm saying? No. And so, what do you mean, no? I mean, we're no. trying to create. We're, are we not trying to create a multi metaverse right now? Yes. Are we not trying to create sentient beings that think for themselves? Yes. Why? So that we can go be in those worlds and be with those things. So that we can be those things. So we can create through thought instead of having to go through the process. Of well, ultimately, 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 you are still in your physical form, and which is you right here, right now, and the no. consciousness getting going somewhere else. No, it's just you seeing a virtual reality 
TV show that you can interact so, with. Okay, so if that's the case, then the idea of me thinking things and then having those things happen, and this has been scientifically proven, not just, ah, oh, I want money and money just falls down, but I believe, and uh, maybe we'll go with the idea of changing your stars, the movie, um, what was the name of the movie? Um, guy who wants to be a prince, but he's not, and he fights. It's a movie, the guy who played um, Batman, I mean, he played uh, Joker and he died. Um, Oh, he, uh, he, 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 he Ledger yeah. plays a movie, and 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 he's a, a kid who has no money. It's during like uh, uh, uh I don't know, like uh, I don't know, Renaissance era period, and he's, he's trying to he wants to become a uh, yeah, and he and he does javelin right, and there's a a point in the movie where he says, um, I don't agree with where I am and I'm going to change my stars. I'm going to change my, my reality. There's a movie that just came out right now about a kid who played, um, Gran Turismo, uh, uh, uh the video yeah. game. Yeah. 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 Became, yeah. Didn't, didn't watch it. It's, terrible. it's phenomenal. Please watch it. It's a real true story too. That's the trippy part is that there was a kid who played video games incessantly. And his father said to him, you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to be a race car driver. You're never going to make it. And the kid today has raced in over 500 races around the world, is a, one of the best drivers that, have ever, that has ever existed, and he played video games. And it all happened because he believed. Nothing more. J.K. Rowling, homeless woman in a car, telling her kid's story, just believed. So there's something something weird going on in this thing called belief there's something weird going on when i think and i create so there is something else other than this reality and just this being the thing no there's more well, jk Rowling wrote a book because sent it to a whole bunch of publishers who didn't believe in it and then eventually one of them said yeah and green lit it that's because she, she wrote the book. She had to believe in herself in the first place. Yeah, yeah, she had to believe in herself and do it. But it didn't Jim just Carrey. magically. It didn't just manifest. It was because she grafted and did it she, in reality, but, and she and, used her and, imagination. And reality is what chemicals and 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 and, and, and electricity. That's it. Yep. That's it. Chemicals and electricity. Pretty much. That's it. Where did that come from? Big Bang. Where did that Where come did that from? Come? I don't know. Exactly. And so, and and and, and yet that still, need to say we won't find out. We will by becoming the technology. Technology is the only thing other than inspiration that makes us grow. I don't know what else you want, bro. The answer is right in front of you. It's right there. Technology and inspiration. What is inspiration? I can't explain it. What is technology? I can't explain it. But I know that it helps me evolve. And both of them, one is physical, one is spiritual. Fuck you, bro. Something made us, bro. Something put math here. There's no way that it just bloop out of nowhere. There's no fucking way. No way. There's nothing that exists that we are inside of or outside of that just starts. Chicken and the egg. Something came first, bro. Lizard something. That came from something. That came from something. That came from something. I'm going to the ultimate source of coming. Yeah, but that goes on in ad infinitum, unless you believe that time is lived. Which uh, is but there, there is no time. Time does not exist. So therefore, is, no, so therefore, there's no before and there's no end. And therefore, what's the it's a, So then it's a fractal that was created by scientists that are trying to remember what it's like to be human. It's the answer is the answer, bro. The answer is the answer. Yeah, but that, and why are we... But, in, but Okay, let's take that another step. So in their reality, 
There must yeah. be time. No, they're outside of time and space. They already are out. But how, how do they get out? Because they got a machine that they made that put them out of the machine. Whilst they, they, were, machine. Were, in, whilst they were in time, they created something that brought them out. So, there so was the, way I, the, the way I see it is like there's a creationer, <laughs> machine, machine maker, or whatever you want to call them, that creates a thing that then has an experience that wants to make creations that gets to the ultimate creational thing that starts the thing all over again. That's it. And through that pro process, there's a growth process. There's a building of something very amazing and beautiful. Like I said, getting off stage uh, or putting the thing in, uh, seeing the thing as you're being the thing, as you were the thing, as you are the thing. And <gasps> the deepest breath of your life, the most amazing exhale of your life, and that's it. And then you start over again. Another deep inhale. Another deep breath. Like a four box, like a box routine of breathing. It's the same thing. A breath of nothingness, a breath full, a breath of hold, a breath of release, a breath of nothingness, a breath of hold, a breath. That's what it is, bro. I think we're going to have to just agree to disagree on, on, on basically philosophy. And life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's philosophy because I think a lot of our philosophies match. I think it's more ideology on um, I, I think what we're really dealing with here is whether you want to be like agnostic or whether you want to be atheist and you're not an atheist. I'm not. So no, I, no nobody, it, nobody, nobody is anything but agnostic. Even the Pope must have doubt. Even the uh, strongest atheist cannot deny the possibility. That right. And so if that's the case, Everyone's agnostic. It, goes back to what we're, it goes back to what we're saying about in the beginning of this thing. Is that we're living inside of something that we don't understand at our tertiary level of understanding. We're seeing that everything works off of a system of numbers, ones and zeros at the very base level. We realize that we're in a dualistic living experience. All of those things we know for real. Like those are real. We know that there's these inevitable, like, universal laws that we can't change. We know this. So it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a thing that is and isn't. It is and it isn't. It's the ultimate magic trick. It's the ultimate science experiment. It's the ultimate piece of art. It's the ultimate piece of music. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. And we are part of that hologram a creation thing that creates other holograms of creation things that separate from the first piece of the hologram and never stop creating holograms of thoughts and ideas and universes and places and things and ideas and things and more and bang and ying and that every angle and every direction and every side of all all time and all eternity and there is no time and there is no space and we're in it which is kind of fucking cool we're like, we're like, an, like I said. To an extent, I agree with that. Yeah. To a, yeah to, and, I, and that's all I need. That's it. That's it. Because if that's if you can if you can kind of get there, you'll get there when we get there. You'll but get there I when we get there. About machines and all this VR and technology taking us to a high level stuff. I, well, I'm, that's not, the same I'm, not, I'm you're, not convinced you're in now, it. You're, you're, now, you're now 1890, 1910, and you're saying, light bulbs? Really? Really? Light bulbs? Do we really need light bulbs? That's what you're doing right now. That's it. No big deal. Radio? I'm not saying Morse code? technology isn't moving us forward. Oh, it, it is. So then what is the ultimate move forward? If, if, if technology is moving us forward, what is the ultimate in technology movement forward? To connect the technology into me. So that I can be conscious light. And I can create without having to go through the process. Bro, hello. I'm not sure that that's the, that's the ultimate stage. But there we go. What, what's the ultimate goal for your life? Isn't it to create? Isn't it to share, love, give, and grow? Isn't that the ultimate in anyone's life? Yeah, but you don't Content? need tech for that. You don't necessarily you don't, need tech for that. No. 
but we are in tech. So you can't say that it doesn't necessarily need to exist because we're using it right now to talk. So it, we're in that world. So if we're in that world, that tech is getting bigger and growing more, and it's not stopping, and we see the, grow, the growth spurt from blah, 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 to nothing, to, uh, then sorry, we're not turning around. And if we're not turning around, where are we headed? Genetically modified nano babies for the five, hive. I've, started, I've said it a million times. It's what we're doing. We're, we're already doing it with mRNA and learning how to change the genetic code and add structure to the key that we want. So if we know how to do that, then it's how many years before I can grow a tail and have it tapped into my uh, bone structure. And now I have a tail that moves when I'm happy or sad. Goes underneath my legs when I'm sad or scared. Wags whenever I'm happy. Sure. Yeah, it's not a good thing though. What? 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 Then because the, the, as a, as a human, sometimes your thoughts of what you really are thinking, you don't necessarily want to share them. And if you've got this tail that goes wagging when you're happy. And it's and it goes between your legs when you're scared and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes you've got to pretend that you're not change, happy, and sometimes you've got to pretend that's you're not scared. You. James, that's you. That's not the furries of this world. That's not the people who are into marrying a robot. That you, once again, you feel like everybody are, is your cup, and they're not. Everybody's got their own cup, bro. Everybody's got their own size of cup and different type of cup that hold different things. And so I can't expect for everybody to be in the same cup. And you are expecting everyone to be in the same cup and they're not, they're just not. There's some people here are the NPCs, straight NPCs. There's some people here that are meant to be the geniuses. There's some people here that were, it's a roll of the dice, bro. Roll of the dice. Genetically roll dice, little, 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 ping, you're blonde, little, 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 boom, you're stupid, little, 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 you're fucking hot, little, 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 you're an actor, little, 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 you're fucking black, little, 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 you're African, little, 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 you're fucking die of diphtheria because fucking you were born in Africa. That's not my fault. That's just the fucking roll of dice. Fuck you. We're playing, we're playing a game. That's your role. You came in. You don't get to choose the role either. You just get some dice and it get rolled for you and you come out. Go! No arms and no legs. Let's see what you do. And not because I, I want to see what you do. Let's just see what happens. I want to see what ha happens when I mix the, the, the carbon and the thing. It's a cool experiment for a 10-year-old to see the volcano exploding. I did it. You did it. It's just cool. And when I'm at that level of understanding, making the volcano is cool. Making new worlds it's cool. Mm. Anyway, I, I just don't think we're going to agree on the world and how it works. Yeah, of course not. I don't want us to. Man, I don't want us to. On some level, I want you to keep a, 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 a thing of the... It ends up being you. And even if it's just a tiny little, tiny little beef, it's still you. And that's the beauty. And there's other people that are kind of like you that you fit in better with that I don't fit in better with. And yet there are people in between those two people that work really well with both groups. And then there's other people who come with ideas for those people to work with those two groups and just come but, up with an idea. But, right? but bro, you and I do work well together. But because we all we, because we have such contrasting opinions and then when we and ideas on life and then when you brainstorm shit you bring things to the table that i wouldn't think of i could bring things to the table that you wouldn't think of and therefore the whole all is better and so we're living within the game to remember what it is to be us good god james <laughs> We're here to remember ourselves, bro. We're here to remember ourselves. That's it. We're here to remember how 
beautiful we are. No, no, we're here to remember stuff. We're here to live and do stuff, which and we that's... then, which we then reflect upon. But yeah, we're that's still again, pushing that's going again, forward. That's again. We're not just we're not just memories, but we're moving forward with new stuff that hasn't been done before. But if time doesn't exist, then it's already happened, and we're just experiencing the experience. Yeah, but if time doesn't exist, then it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> we no. don't know. We don't know. You're speculating. No, we know that time doesn't exist. We know that time is a creational space that we made up based on the, to based on the experience of what we're seeing. We know that for a fact. We know that we made up a 24-hour clock. We made it up. Why? Because it's what we're experiencing. And so from the experience, we then start making data points about the experience. The anti kytherian clock expresses that in and of itself. We understood the star. We understood it came around a couple times. Oh, fuck. We make a mathematical principle based on that. We can make a clock that has a gear that does this. And we're going to make another clock that makes another gear that does this. And holy fuck, the two clocks work together. And we can put those two together and that one and that one and that one. That's the anti kytherian clock, bro. That's nothing more than just this, seeing in, the map. In, 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 in my opinion, what you just said was in the past. What I'm saying right now is in the present. And what I'm about to say that I don't know is in the future. As a being that experiences a, a period of birth to death, yes, I agree with you. As a being that is not experiencing life and death and is watching the movie, I disagree with you. But the only experience you're having is the one that is sat staring at me through Facebook. And my experience is dualistic because I live within a dualistic realm that has and has not. So I am and I'm not at the same time as I'm experiencing the experience, which I'm not experiencing, but I am experiencing because of choice, because of intention that was given to me. <laughs> I did, I did. I don't know. I know. It's, 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 but speaking of things that are coming up in the future, what is the future for you, Paul? What's what's Man, coming up? You know, I, in, I, was, in, I was just going to say in, that. in this in your in your pre cyborg current state, what does next? What does the next week bring for you? Hopefully, a better and more in depth connection to source. That's all I'm looking for at this point, dude. I don't care about the money. I don't care about the fame. I'm not looking to become something better than. I'm looking to be okay with where I'm at and grow from that space. I'm looking to express the things that I've learned in a way that I can share it with other people that will hopefully give other people the audacity to believe in themselves and say, yeah, sure, fucking why not? I don't need a job. I can go live out in the middle of nowhere and go be me and do me. And I can find a group of people because there's an 8.5 billion of us. You'll find the group if you look for them hard enough. Uh, a group of people who want to do what I want to do. And I want to find, like I, like, I just found this group uh, two weeks ago. Artists, people who work for Google, people who are uh, singers, painters, uh, people who work in welding, people who work in every aspect of whatever you could think of. Photography, film, everything. And they don't want to charge for anything. They just want to give it away. And they have other people who want the same thing. And then before you know it, all the resources that they need are right there. And before you know it, everybody's helping out everybody else. Before you know it, everybody's cooking for everybody else. Before you know it, everybody's sharing the only thing they have left. And before you know it, everybody else shares the only thing they have left. And before you know it, everybody's eating and everybody's feeding and everybody's it's like, what the fuck? And that comes from a place of not having 
going back to I'll do anything for $250,000. I'm willing to keep a secret for $250,000. I'm willing to not tell somebody else something else. I'm willing to enforce making somebody else scan an ID at a store to prove that you're the age that you say you are, even though it says it on the federal ID card that you just gave me. I'm going, so it's that mentality that stops us from growing. It's the mentality of ownership of others and the ownership of ideas that stops us from growing. It's, it's the want, a childlike want of domineering over someone else. So a child will make you feel the way that they feel. And so if you say, oh, my God, I'm so frustrated and angry at my kid, that's exactly how your kid feels. They're frustrated and angry. And they're doing everything in their, in their, in their abilities and their not good abilities to manipulate you emotionally to get what they want because they're unhappy because you have not taught them how to emotionally and intellectually express themselves correctly. And that's your fault as a parent. Sorry, I'm not sorry. And the reason that you may not be able to do it is because your parents didn't do it very well. And that's not their fault. You can't get angry at a blacksmith son for being a blacksmith. You can get upset with the blacksmith son who doesn't change the behavioral patterns once they are recognized. Different size cups. So you're looking to go into the woods next week. <laughs> <laughs> you're already in the woods, from what I can see. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually, uh, so I was invited to go live um, on this 285-acre property that's, um, that's just a festival space, but people live at the festival space. And then when the festivals come, they work the festivals. <laughs> And then they go to all the other festivals. So I want to go do hypnosis and magic shows in which I create. This idea of sharing, loving, giving, growing, this idea of audacity of believing in yourself through my magic and my hypnosis. So that the people who see it and feel it carry it with them and say, I want to be able to do that. Not a hypnotist, not the, the, not, I want to be able to do what he's doing, whatever that is. And that's obviously, he just believes in himself. I want to believe in myself. How do I believe in myself? And my answer is go do something. doesn't matter what it is. Just go do something. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, you gain a sense of achievement if you do something without a shadow of a doubt. But that doesn't mean that the achievement is you. And the people who allow them to believe that the achievement is them are the ones that say, mine, mine, mine. That's my lighter. That's my car. That's my house. No, it's not. It's heavy. Listen, what we're talking about is heavy, bro. And we're not talking about something that's easy. We're talking about heavy concepts here. Most people don't want to hear this information. Because we've been left believe that we're in a different game than the game that we're in. A manipulated humanistic game where they take away the best writings and manipulate those writings. They take the best of the of the of the greatest minds and kill them off. Why? To keep control. Why? Because we're at a very, very low level of evolution and we're still not at a level of evolution where we understand that the real thing is to share love give and grow and that's real evolution that's what the sun does that's what the flowers do that's what the birds do that's what the birds that get eaten by other animals do that's what the animals that eat the other animals do and that's what the decomposition does it's all share, love, give, grow from their way of being. 
So I just had a bit of cramp there, Paul. So I had to get up. Because <laughs> I'm perched on the end of a bed, which is really uncomfortable. With, oh, an okay. open, with an open window, and I had bare feet. And as I say, it's quite cold. So suddenly he's like, ow. <laughs> so look, let, let's do this. Let's do this, because we never got to this. And I wanted to do this from the beginning. What are you working on now, like project-wise? What are you doing? What are you working towards in your future? Since you asked me, I really want to know more about you. And, um, yeah, that's it. Where are you at? Okay, so um, since about 2010, I've had a script, um, which is about Santa Claus and... The Krampus, and a few people know about The Krampus. There's been a few movies about it. A lot of people don't, um, but essentially The Krampus is the anti-Santa. Um, and so I've got a film which is essentially Frost Nixon, but with Santa and The Krampus. Um, and they have a philosophical debate, like we've just done for the last two and a half hours, um, about uh, how... How bad does a child have to be to get a present from Santa? So San San good. San Santa, so good, James. Santa is of the opinion, goodwill to all men. Krampus is of the opinion, cause and effect and consequences, and punishment to those people that have been bad. Right. So, um, well, wait, the scene is set is, but doesn't Santa have a naughty and a, a, a non naughty list, and that the people who are yep. naughty get a piece yep. of coal? Yep, 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 yep. So here we go. But, but, it's the twenty. But, it's but, the twenty seventh. It's the twenty seventh of December, and okay. Santa has delivered presents to everyone, whether they were good or bad. Our and a piece of coal. A piece of coal could actually be looked at as something good, even if it's not anything, no. because it can everyone keep got their, Everyone got their presents. If someone wanted a bite, they got a bite. If someone wanted a someone wanted a kettle, they got a kettle. Whatever they wanted, they got. If they are Santa for it, they got it. Okay. Whoa. Now, okay. The the Krampus, aka the Promise Goblin, because he dealt with the promises and people who broke their promises, because um, there's multiple Krampuses effectively. Um, five finds the naughty list in the bin, or at least a bit of it, because obviously there's billions of people. And he's like, motherfucker. <laughs> so, there, there's... This there's, is so good there, already. There's, a, there's, a, so there's, good a, there's already. our prologue. Um, it's set on the 27th of December, which is the first working day in the UK after Christmas Day, because we have a thing called Boxing Day, which is on the 26th. Um, yeah. So, we have the Krampus going to confront Santa at his office. And Santa is completely hungover. He's in a terrible state. He's obviously drunk hundreds of millions of beers, eaten tens of millions of cookies, etc., etc., as part of the course of Christmas Eve and the delivery. Of course. He has to do I'm sorry, but I need a line. I need a line where he's like, "Beer, milk, and cookies is a bad idea." Like just to make fun of uh, oh, hot oh, milk. Oh, hot, oh, hot, you put me your email address. I'll send you the script. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah. And so that's where we start our film. And he goes in and he barges way past various assistants that he's got. All these elves that are in the office. Um, and he basically provides evidence that a santa's been wrong to give presents to all these bad people um but he he's of the extreme opinion that, that, that a kid that if they were told to eat their greens and then doesn't eat their greens that kid doesn't get no presents so he's on one end of the axis santa's on the other end of the axis he's on a war path. and he's and, on a and war path. They, <laughs> They, yeah, they, have a, they have a, like a four or five minute debate about this using flashbacks and um, in the, uh, the examination of a particular character. But because Santa's so much in a bad state, he's got the runs, he's vomiting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, he has to leave the room to deal with a bioemergency, as we say. Um, 
And it's at that point that the Krampus spots the keys to the sleigh and, like, fuck it. He's got the naughty list and he decides to go out and about and steal the presents back from the bad kids as he sees them. So I've already shot the heist, um, which is like the first steal. The character that is referenced in the debate, he goes and nicks back her Mr. Cuddles doll. Um, the, uh, but also there's an element of what's he going to do to this kid? Because the Krampus in Legend steals kids, like drags them to hell. It's like oh, fucked shit. up. Yeah, so if you've seen the, if you, I've sent you the animated opening to this film. Oh, I, I, did you send it when? Yeah, I sent it to you. It's in the Facebook the, chat. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, so I, I yeah, saw but, uh, the thing. Fine. You, can, you can you can watch that later. It was I'm very much last now. minute. Now that I know what that is, oh, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. So that that basically tells you what the the legend of the Krampus is. That it's this evil so, okay, so, beast so that my takes question, people my, to hell. My question now is. What do you need? And how can I help you? Who can I connect you with? Well, I mean, we're, I, shooting, I we're shooting in December um, on the weekend of 16, 17, and then Monday the 18th of December at a school. So location is sorted out. But what I don't have is crew. The cast is locked. We've shot, obviously, with some of it. Um, and I'm self-funding it. So if there's anyone out there who thinks that's a wonderful idea, um, some I did a I did a Indiegogo a campaign no. like yeah. six years ago, and it it made very little by like 450 quid. Um, most of it was from my good friend Massimo, who you know. Anyway, yeah. that, that might have had to be private. Anyway, but he did. Good on him. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so we, we've we made next to no money. So it's all going to come out of my pocket. And it's remarkably hard to shoot a film at a proper location. And you've got to get insurance and you've got to get lights and you've got to get sound and you've got to get a camera. I don't have any of this stuff. I'm a I'm a continuity person. All like, The only kid I've got is a, is a and you don't, camera and, phone and, and, and a clipboard. What about... Um uh hit record have you heard of that um, it's, so a website. it's a website in which you can um upload your information whatever else and then there's a bunch of other people in there that will start to help you produce the movie like i don't have an editor guys i really need an editor and they, oh, i have 20 years of experience blah, blah blah i want to help you do it and then it's a it's called Hit Record. It was made by uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. And, oh, and they've done a bunch of movies. They've done really well. And then they do profit sharing from the, from the film. Trouble, trouble is it's a short. Because it's a short film, um, there's not going to be any money. For anybody who invests in it, they're literally Holy just crap. investing in the idea. There, there, there's no, there's no, it's, it, it, you can't get... Hmm? Go to hit record. Go to hit record. Check out the website. Go check out the website. It's okay, exactly what you need. They make ready. short films. It's only for short films. They go to film festivals with the stuff that people like. Trust me, bro. Go to hit record. Even if you're looking at it right now on your website. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt is the one who created it. You create your own account. Make your own profile. Talk about what you're building. I already have the cast. I already have this. I already have the other. I need these things, and people will start to show up, bro. It's what the website's built for. It's a really cool idea on his end. It's for exactly what you're trying to do. Okay. I'll look it up cool. Once, right. well, when we finish this. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. where I'm at. And um, cool. uh, the film that's been in 100-plus film, film festivals is finally finishing its – its campaign, so I'm going to be looking to see where the hell I should send it. Because it's was done on a tiny budget, I'm not sure it's used a Netflix camera, as they call it. Um, mm. So it probably won't be to go on Netflix. Um, but in th the other trouble is it does reference various things that Universal and Disney possibly, possibly right. have copyright to. So getting distribution 
could be an issue. When you've got somebody called Dorothy and they say she's from Kansas and she's dressed like Dorothy, um, <laughs> yeah, you, we, we know who that is. <laughs> but it's not set in the 1940s, so it's not her. Right. It's it's more a modern day. Yeah. Uh, it's a modern day reinterpretation. So at that point, isn't it part of parody law? Should be, but even then, if you're well, doing well, something that's like, right. when you're doing like fan fiction or stuff like that, you still can't make revenue off other people's copyright, even if it's a parody. Oh, right. So then, so then, why not do distribution for free? Yeah, probably would. But what I'd love to do is make some freaking money out of it. <laughs> because yeah, so I just spent a shit ton of money on it, and I'd like to have right. a bit of a return. So why not turn it into, instead of, because you can't make money off of it the way you just said, right? You can't make money off of distribution. So then why not make money like I was telling you, which is start doing talks. You're an award-winning uh, uh, director. A, it's a push. I'd be more set to be able to do that if I had a feature on in my belt. I think, well, yes, I agree, but I also feel, though, you could go to film festivals that you've already been part of and already won and go back to every single one of them and say, hey, I'm doing a new talk that's about how to win repeatedly at film festivals, and granted, other people have done it, but if you would like for me to come to your film festival and show my award that I won at your film festival and talk about my film and how I got to the process of being into a hundred and something film festivals, pay me five, 10 grand and I'll come <laughs> and they'll do it. And they'd laugh at me. I'm afraid to say, unless it was one of the really big film, unless it was one of the really big ones like Venice or slam dance or something like that. And I didn't get in those, you know? Right. Well, get it, get it. Like I said, look out of a hundred and something that you've been in, 20 will say yes, that'll pay you three to five thousand dollars to do a talk. No, I don't think they would, mate. I really don't. I, I think really they would, bro. Don't. I think they would. 20 out of 170. They, they, yeah. they, no, I can think of maybe two. They don't, they don't, have, they don't have panels. Have they don't have panels to do that. And no. when they bring on uh, other artists, they, they don't have yeah. panels and people to talk. There, there, there's, there's different scales of festival you know right there's right. like your so, your your ones that actually will give you a prize and the ones right. that basically um barely cover the expense of putting on the festival and you've got the ones that are the scams which we mentioned three hours ago <laughs> but but nevertheless um the ones that i got into wouldn't do that Okay. I know that might but, sound, sound like I'm being negative, but genuinely, they wouldn't do it. But okay, so but there are festivals that they do pay people to have talks and be talk talk. Yeah, at, but at they, a festival. The, the ones that are paying people to do that would be getting Scorsese and David Lynch and so on. They wouldn't be getting me. Understood. Is there a, I'm going back to that. Like, that's my thing. Like I immediately think, oh, well, he's already done so well and is winning. Use that as your platform. I'm winning. Uh, how did I win? This is the way as I won. And I know you said somebody else is already doing it, but that doesn't yeah, mean you can't do it as there's, well. There's a, there's a Facebook friend of mine that does the whole how to get into film festivals, how to win them, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's her business. And she's got that business, you know? Right. But I mean, I, just because I don't, I, I don't think it's we've had this conversation. something. We've had this conversation through text think, and I was like, yeah. well, Burger King and Wendy's wouldn't have said that, you know, like, and you're like, yeah, but it's not the same. And I'm like, it is, it is the same. It isn't um, the same because the, the number of people that would pay for it, they're going to go for, the person that's established, you know, I, on the other hand, can say, right, give me 50 quid and I'll tell you exactly how to get into film festivals. You um, would? Or you could? 
You couldn't do that. I, I've, I've done that for free once. Um, and the person made use of my advice, but was extremely um, unappreciative. So <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. So, yeah, because, I did, because, I did because that anytime for you. you give something away for free. If, some, if you give something away for free, people don't find value in it. Yeah, I've learned no, that totally. Really. Um, so, so then why not? Why not take the thing that you did with that person, turn it into a PDF, make a one page document that says, Hey, I'll teach you how to do it for 50 bucks and sell a hundred of those. Fuck it. Five grand. I just don't think there's that many people that would do it. I do. I do. I'm also, I really do. Very, I'm also very much focused on sorting out this, this film. Yeah, for this, out. With this. That go, kind of go to, go to hit record. Hopefully, hopefully you'll find people in hit record that are in the UK because there are they're all over the world, uh, and there's people who will work from like India. Like I just want to be part of a project. I, I'll do the music for you, or I'll do this, or I'll do anything you can think of that you want that needs help in the production phase is all there. It's such yeah, a dope. Yeah, a lot of it has to be local, but kind of kind of the, right. the, the stuff that doesn't have to be local and could be done remotely has been done um, oh, already okay. already okay. as part of the kind of the, the, the fact we've already shot two days out of five um and we've got the animation etc etc so we, we've kind of done all that we're just having to pick up on production again and, and try and do it as cheaply as humanly so possible without so affecting the production value my next option for you is uh, go to a film school and say, listen, I am an award-winning director, which you are. I've done this many films. Uh, I've been in this many awards, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm moving another one with my own money, and I need a bunch of interns. I need a lighting intern, or this intern, or that intern, or that intern, and that intern. Here it is. Throw me kids, and they'll throw you kids. Dude, yeah, we actually, because, we, because we're shooting in a school, we're actually getting um, a few students to help out. But at so the same go. time, um, I don't want to be having to train people on set. I ain't got time. So then use the kids who need their last piece of work. for They need to work on a short film. They have to work on an actual short film. It's part of their credits, and you find the kids who have been in school for three, four years that know what they're doing already, and then you grab those. Same thing. You can find it, dude. Mm -hmm. You can find it. it yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is when, I, when, I, when I post on like the Southern Uni and various um, things, when, when, when we're 100% locked on those dates, because we've had a, a few times due to COVID and other things that we were about to shoot, and then we couldn't. So I don't, right. don't want to be messing people about. Right, I understand. But we're, still, I understand. we're still three months off. We're still three months off. I just, I just want it to happen. That's all, you know. Like oh, I want it to happen. God, so. like, you, like, like you wouldn't believe I wanted to happen. <laughs> right. So, are you? Do you have any like feature link films that you have that are, are ideas or yeah projects that so, you want to work on? I've got two features that are written. Um, one is based off a short film that I did back in 2009, back in my New York days. Um, the short film was called The Ghoul Lord. Um, the fe feature is called Crips and Creatures. It's about Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but it's not all set in a Dungeons and Dragons environment. It basically flips between people's imagination and their reality. And two-thirds of it is reality, and you've got um, reality affects what happens in the fantasy realm and the consequences of what happens in the fantasy realm affects what happens in reality because oh, so good. There, there, are, there are life consequences for people who are attached to the characters and when bad things happen in the fantasy realm, the group of friends essentially break up. Um, there is an antagonist in the film which causes all of that. Um, and so it's about how do they win in the fantasy realm when their number of players has been depleted um, and how in reality do these kids that have all got, well, they're not kids, they're all about 30, they've all got issues um, 
and how do they each turn their issue around? Uh, mm -hmm. But that's, that's, that's kind of my passion project. That one to do it right, though, because it's got a Lord of the Rings style to it. We're, yeah, talking, huge we're talking millions to do. So I've got another seen... one which could... Wait, hold, it, on. Could... hold on, hold on. Hold on, before you go further, there's a group of people called Corridor Crew on YouTube, and they have um, a Dungeons and Dragons game movie show. It's very, very close to what you're talking about. It's them sitting around a Dungeons and Dragons table, dressed in their characters, and then all of a sudden it'll floomp, and it'll, they'll be in that world yeah. playing the character. That's, so it's that's, very that's it that's it there's also a thing called the there's also a thing called the gamers which is very much like um what i've mentioned but but mine is more about life consequences and mm. it has comedic elements to it but it's really a drama um a lot of these other ones are very much tongue in cheek and and so on um so that's what differentiates mine from from the yeah. others. Um, yeah. The other one I've got is a slasher film, which as you can probably imagine you could do something like I know you did last summer or whatever it was fairly easily for a hundred grand or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Mine's got a interesting twist, which I'm not going to say here because um, it's very much the oh no. That's why they're all dying. <laughs> the, crux, the crux of it all, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the thing is, it, it possibly needs a rewrite. I don't think it does, but it has been pitched to me that I rewrite it where the twist, the audience knows. So they're oh. all going, oh, no, don't do that. Don't read from the Necromonicon. That's what's going to kill you off, you know, because the audience knows what is the thing that instantly gates the problem in the same way that in ring it's like don't watch the videotape it'll kill you it's well, it's ring-esque but it doesn't have supernatural element um so it's don't do that that's what's going to cause the death um but it's a bit smarter than that um and everyone's named after toilets so there's a there's a kimberly clark character there's a character called armitage shanks um just as a kind of amusing in joke for me as I wrote it. <laughs> but you don't realize that they're called that until right at the end. Because the, oh, guy no. that's called, the guys that are called Armitage, they call him Army. And he's uh, Armitage to a couple of people. And then he's interviewed by the police, like right at the end of Act Two. So you've already sat through an hour and they say, so Mr. Shanks. And then the audience is going to go, no, he's called Armitage Shanks, which I think, I think is brilliant. And sorry, it's a spoiler for everyone who's watching this video. But, you know, he's, he's named after your, uh, your rhino. And so that was a little... Oh, that's a bit hilarious. But, but, but that's a completely serious. There's no, there's no fun and games in that right. slasher. It's not, like a, it's not like a comedy slasher. Um, right. And then I do have a feature film idea, which I've told, spoken to you about, for The Witch Hunters Are Coming. Which what, was... I haven't yeah. written it, but I do oh, have yeah. an idea for how to do a feature. And basically, he goes international, uh, our witch hunter Siddharth. He meets a very elderly um, Hansel and Gretel in the <laughs> Black so Forest of Germany. Um, and they go tracking down a witch... Um, and they find a bunch of witches prancing around naked in a fire and stuff and wipe them out with their pitchforks, and it turns out they were just nudists. <laughs> so good. Oh, so, so good. So, but, yeah, so and, and it's going to be done like an episode of Tiger King. So you kind of... Why is Would he in prison? Why is he in God. why is he in prison? I like and then you've got footage of him doing proper witch hunts, and then you've got the main German Hansel and Gretel witch hunt. 
where you realise what he's done, and then you're going to have all the producers of the TV show coming in and talking. The other people that were on the film crew talking, Hans and Gretel are talking. He's talking from his prison cell, and it's like, why is he here? So that's that's the feature. That's that's a throw. That's a, do- a dart being thrown perfectly. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So well, I basically need to watch the 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 series two of Target King, so that I can basically rip it off <laughs> and, and add my fantasy element. Yeah. yeah. With, 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 yeah. with basically how they have the 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 voice overs how they have the characters appearing on screen when you go to flashback when you go to actual footage that the witch hunters are coming in camera crew shot and just to mix it up you know because because it, 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 it can't it, it's got to still have a, a larger fantastic element than the short film does um right which the, the short film the action is basically somebody running across the field and somebody having a bucket of water thrown on them would we'll step that up a notch with a with a whole bunch of pitchfork action for, for right. the so i reckon but again i because it's done like a reality show there's no reason why it couldn't be done for 100 grand something so the 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 short film is that online so people can watch it or no no it's not yet because it's still just got one or two more festivals to go through. Um, okay. And then it will be, if there's anybody watching this who wants to message me direct and say, Hey, I want to see it. Fine. Um, I'll send it to you. Don't share it. Don't share it. It's not yours. I'll sue you. But, uh, <laughs> but oh, so it's mine. You know, it's my, it's my property. Um, it's but, uh, but oh, I'll, it's let, I'll let you watch it. I'll let you watch it. As Paul will test <laughs> It is so good. something else. All right. So for those who did watch this long, uh, awesome, because this was a great yeah. one. This is a damn good. This is a good one. Um, where do people find you? I already tagged it and everything, but just for those who are watching, um, how do they find you? What's your website? What's your okay. social? All that stuff. So um, I have a website, which is jamesatkinsfilm.weebly.com. Yeah, Weebly website. I'm one of those guys from many years ago. Um, got to update it because it's like 2019 relevant. So nothing Witch Hunters is on it. Um, so I need, I need to update that sucker. Um, uh, I've also got Instagram and I'm James Atkins 101, I think. Um, and I've got a... Hook me up on Facebook. And I've got Twitter. I no, I've got, I've got X or whatever it is. But I don't use it anymore. I, I, my last X post was, nobody does X anymore unless you're a celebrity. So I've just stopped posting on X because it's a waste of my time. Right. Um, but in unless Instagram, I'm still doing that. Facebook, I'm still heavily into that. I've got my website. Um, hold me up. There's a, fa- there's a Facebook page, which is at The Promise Goblin for, um, for the, the Christmas the films. That's right. Yeah, yep. and there is at the witch hunters are coming for um, my my witch comedy. Cool, perfect, James. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with no me today and no being problem. on this this crazy podcast insane. thing. And, uh, we'll be on YouTube. Insane it's because it took, it took two hours and forty five minutes to get to what I was talking to you about. The rest of it was just us batting back and forth about philosophy and religion and you name it. So apologies to anyone who watched it who thought they'd actually get to see me talking about film. But you, if you stuck with no, it for did. two hours and no, 50 minutes, then I did. But you go. It, it's the it's for the ones that really care. Yeah. They get the real info. Um, Absolutely. And and if you think about it, we did talk about film production. We talked about uh, the the idea of being in film festivals and your feelings about. Them. So we 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 got a good yeah thing. And and, the- and and we diverted just before I got into a really big rant about fraudsting film festivals, which is good <laughs> because otherwise it could have been a rather uh, ugly and yeah. negative, negative chat. And then maybe your film will go to more film festivals. Maybe, maybe. My big question though is Curtis Latham 
Was Paul putting me down or was I putting Paul down? I don't know. <laughs> Paul is one of the coolest and greatest guys I know. Don't put him down. Oh, uh, I think it was at the, the, the conversation when we were talking about religion and whatever else. And, and he was, yeah. you said something and uh, he said that. Yeah, it's no big deal. Curtis is a good kid. You're, you're uh, big enough and ugly awesome. enough to brush that off, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and, it, and we were in... Um, in in vegas and i would street perform and he would work he was working in a little booth selling like tchotchke stuff and he was always next to me so we hung out every day and that's how we became friends nice hopefully i'll have him on as well um so okay with that uh i uh i thank you so much for coming on the show and being with me um and with that uh, i'm gonna remove you i'm gonna end it and i'll repost this on youtube so if you want to share this with your friends and say hey do you want to watch something i was on for three hours <laughs> could you do me a f could you do me a favor paul that i'm being legit here can you do a cropped one which is basically the first two or three minutes when we're talking about film get rid of two and a half hours and then then the last bit because i can post that i can post that i i can't i can't in all honesty post what we chatted about it's a podcast bro that's what it is I, it goes no, where it goes i know I and if i ever wanted to have my own podcast and i'll never get anybody <laughs> Oh, you'll get people, bro. You'll get yeah, anybody you worked with, all your friends. You start doing it. That's it. That's all I, there saw is some of them, I saw some of them popping on, and I thought, oh god, They're here, here they are. Well, then I said, oh god, I don't even believe in him. Um, anyway, <laughs> and I saw them pop in, and I thought, you poor bastards, you poor you bastards, poor, you come in here to listen to me talk about film, and you're getting this. That that's not what they signed in on a Sunday afternoon for. That's fine. Oh, it's, it's Sunday. It's, it's, it's Sunday all good. For some, of them, for some of them, it might have been the most lively debate that they've experienced in a very long time. You know, and, and we were cordial with each other. We weren't disrespectful. And you can see yeah. how people can have a conversation and not, if anything, if we showed anybody that, we showed them that. You know? Absolutely. The people can have completely contrasting opinions about the way the universe is. And almost, so almost, really cool. almost on every level, we disagreed, and yet here we are, <laughs> able to end this conversation in the knowledge that we both will always have the point of move. Yeah, the point of move. <laughs> move, move. Did yeah. I ever tell yeah. you? I wrote, I wrote. Um, you know, Herman Hesse, Siddhartha, the book Siddhartha. No. It talks about. Oh. Oh, it's a great <laughs> book uh, by Herman Hess. Herman Hess wrote a book called Siddhartha. It's it's based on the first Buddha, and so uh, I wrote one that's called Mudartha, and it's based on the first um, Buddhist cow. And and, and does a does a hybrid cow does a hybrid cow man pull out the heart of somebody walking the streets of New York City? No. Oh yes. Well, that does happen in point of move. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> that, that, that would be oh, that, your cramp. That, that, that was my third that, ever that, film academy film. Yeah, and that's also, if you think about it, that's also the Krampus version of my Mudartha. Quite probably, yeah. Omar Omar <laughs> Hassan walking the streets of um, Lower East Side, dressed up as a cow. <laughs> Bonkers. Anyway, all good. Pulling out, I'll, I'll... pulling out a heart from my chest. We even used mm. the magic trick, didn't we? So that you yeah. could see it come out and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I sent you it. I sent you it yeah. because it's it's private because it's 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 not my best film in the world. So I haven't. I don't let people. I don't let people see it when they go on my profile, but it's there. It's just it's private, so I'll That's send it to you funny. just so you can reminisce about eating a hamburger you, you in New York. Me. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna copy it and post it on my shit. So don't. Oh, I'll, I'll do push. It. I'll, I'll, push, it I'll, care, I'll push it to my reels. I'll push it to my reels. Be honest. When, when you watch it, you'll watch it again. 
And you'll, you'll, and you've probably got... I will push it to my reels. I will be like, oh my God, you have no idea how amazing this film was when I was 28 years old in New York. Fuck you. I will totally push it to my reels. <laughs> Do it. Do it. It's all good. It's yeah. actually surprisingly did see, long. Did you ever see the commercial that I did that was, um, don't be that guy, call the quote guy? No. And I was like, oh God. And it's like, it's so stupid. Like I'm at this uh, coffee shop and it's like, Oh, I love the caramel mocha latte chapalino, whatever it is. The girl's like nine dollars. I give her a twenty dollar bill, and I'm like, "Keep the change." <laughs> was was that your delivery? I hope it was. <laughs> oh, it, was it was horrible. It was great, and uh, it was it was it was meant to be as campy as possible. And then it does like this this call uh, like a um uh, uh, a flashback to the two kids. And the other guy who I'm with, he's like, you've always been burning money. And it goes to a flashback and there's a pile of money and the kid's throwing a light, a match on it, you know? And he makes his face like, and then you come back to me and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a link, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that bombshell. See you later, bro. <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. Out of here. I absolutely love you. Thank you for being on. And I'll see you later. Have a beautiful day. Oh my God, what an awesome episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. For those of you who are watching, uh, please, please go out to the world. Do something nice for somebody else. And if you can't, do something nice for yourself. It does start with you. Number two, don't get caught up in all the crazy because if you do, you end up poopy poopy. And number three, please like, share, subscribe. Send this out to somebody who'd like to see it. Another amazing podcast. Another amazing day. And I wish you nothing but awesomeness in yours. And I'll see you all on the other side.